everybody. Welcome to the Players Take episode 46. I am your host, Justin DeSimone, joined by my co-host, a man freshly returned from Detroit, Montreal Rice. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on, man? How was your trip? Uh, it was a really good trip. I uh, got to reboot, see some family, uh, close a lot of chapters in my life and things of that nature. And I probably won't be going out there for a while anymore. Um, okay. Man, you're making it sound so serious. Well, yeah. I I went out there to see if I really wanted to go back. I, I was kind of torn between going back to Michigan and not going back. And I made a decision that I don't really want to go back um, just because... I was missing family and things of that nature, but I'm doing so well out here. Uh, I got a lot of things moving, a lot of cocks are moving, gears are turning, and I want to continue to turn those gears out here. Yeah. And uh, yeah. when I was out there, I felt like um, well, this this isn't a, a slice of life podcast. What? Come on, the people want to uh, know what's <laughs> going on in your life, bro. Just uh, tell them. Tell yeah, them. Uh, and I just wanted to, yeah, just just not really cut it off but i wanted to slim it down like i really I wanted to yeah i did just, this with boston a few years ago where yeah uh, i kind of i went back like three times the first year i was here and then i kind of cut that down to like a once a year you know eventually yeah. after that and you know yeah. it's like you know you're your own person now man you're independent you're away from home you flew yeah. the coop yeah you exactly know? exactly you're uh, a grown-ass man yeah and I, I used to do that a lot like my first year here <laughs> I had a job where I was able to fly out there a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I was making a decent money where I can fly out there like maybe three or four times a year or maybe almost every month I was going out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was working four by tens, so a lot of people don't know what those are. I was working 10-hour days and oh, getting three days off. Do that. Yeah. And I had the weekends off, so I had uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday off. Yeah. So I can fly out those days and then come back on Sunday night and still be ready oh, for work. That sounds so nice. I wish yeah. we could do four tens. Yeah, I wish you could too. Um, That'd be awesome, dude. Three day weekend every week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but when I got this job, obviously we only have two day weekends, so uh, I cut it down a lot. And uh, I thought I would be missing a lot of it. I thought I'd be missing just like my family in general, but they were really supportive of it and everything of that nature. And um, I don't know. Uh, when I was out there. I was just driving around. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't really, I miss everyone. I don't miss the environment. Like I right. thought I would miss the environment, right. but I, I don't. Yeah, same thing happened to me with Boston, dude. I miss the miss the people I knew there, but I don't miss the place. Yeah, literally at all. Yeah, like, and I'm. It's at the point now, like I'm. I'm almost. I'm seven and a half years removed from living there and i'm at the point now when i go back there i like within three days i can't stand it anymore like i want to go <laughs> so i know exactly what you're saying it's a, a interesting journey i guess you know it, it 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 that place is just not for me and it took me a long time i think to realize that but you know i know what you mean all right well let's get on topic yeah this is a video game show and it's a video game show where we talk weekly about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and your favorite podcast app of choice. And we start every week with what we've been playing. It's been a couple weeks, so there's a lot to catch up on. Uh, but let's start with Montreal. Sir, what have you been playing over these last two weeks, or have you been playing anything? Um, I did go out there with my Switch. I played Pokemon for a little bit, but I really just needed a reboot from everything, so I really didn't touch any video games. Okay, is, so did you, did you get any further? Like, did you beat it, or did you get close to beating it, or no? No, nah, no. Nah, I, I literally only played it for about maybe tops 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, right. when I When I went on this trip, it was like a – a total reboot. I thought about bringing like maybe my Xbox or PlayStation with me, but yeah, I, yeah. I needed to get away from everything. So understood. Um, when I got back though, I did play a little bit of Sekiro and I did play a little bit of League of Legends, but that was only on Monday, and I was running errands on Monday. So I mean, really haven't it. been uh, doing yeah. too much gaming. I'm gonna do a lot more gaming this week, but right. Uh, as a when I took a vacation, I mean, I took like a whole cleanse vacation. From a life, you just took a life vacation. Oh yeah, period. I even I even got a, uh, a pedicure. 
I know. I saw the video on Twitter, <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes I debate about you know muting you for a day or two. You know. Uh, oh, you should. You should. You should definitely. Yeah, I'm definitely really uh, toxic on there. There's. So- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's just certain things you post, like that pedicure video. I just was like, you, you looked really sweaty in the video, like when you because you showed your face first and then you pointed it down at your feet. And I just, I don't know why, but you looked really sweaty in the video. And I, I was like, man, what are they? Is he in a sauna getting a pedicure? Like, I, no, my face is probably just shiny because I, I was okay. like, uh, I do <laughs> facial skincare treatment, so yeah, you got and it. daily. So I mean, yeah. I just woke up. Did all that, then went straight to the pedicure place. So I mean, my face is pretty shiny. If you if you guys follow Montreal, I trap for Hokage on Twitter. The number four, not the word. He's very much a pretty boy on there, and no. he <laughs> posts selfies. There's a lot of videos of him, of him looking at himself and his phone. No, no it's not. Like no, in his car, no, literally no. in his fucking car, just like. Like, hmm, man, I'm looking good today. You no, know, no, you it's get a not. lot of that. If you, if no, you want, it's not. <laughs> if, if you want to, if you want to enjoy a good-looking man on Twitter, M- Montreal's your guy. So, nah, nah. Please follow him. I don't even have a picture of my uh, my my avatar is not even me. It's uh, I mean, currently there were there were definitely periods where it was you. <laughs> oh my, it was it was like an anime character for the longest. Yeah, I mean, you change your profile picture a lot though. I'm I'm on the other side of the spectrum where I I literally don't touch my profile ever. So I've had yeah. the same profile picture since I made my Twitter. I'm trying to be like that, and I I don't know. I don't feel I don't feel need to change it. So. Yeah, I'm trying to be like that. I like the the avatar I have right now, so I'm thinking I'm gonna keep it for a while. Is that from like an anime or something? Uh, it's uh, what's his face? Uh, Score Bunny's Last Evolution Cinderance. Oh, it is. Yeah, but it's like someone drew it. Like I don't know if you already seen a meme with uh Bugs Bunny where he has like a whole crown on his head and everything looking like a king. Yeah, they drew that. They drew with Cinderance. (laughs) It's it's Score Bunny. That's fucking funny. Yes. Oh, the internet's great. All right. Well, I have been in a similar boat to you. Um, I've been in a bit of a funk uh, in life and in gaming the last, like, three weeks or so. And I think I feel like I'm kind of now just coming out of it uh, on the gaming side. Um, I've kind of been out of it in life for a couple weeks. But, like, dude, it was like a week ago from this past weekend, I was playing Felseal. And I really like that game, but for some reason it just wasn't clicking. You know, you you get that feeling where you, you like you know you like a game, but you're just kind of sick of it. Yes, I actually reached that point with Sekiro last yeah. yesterday. And dude, that happened. That happened last weekend, and I just fucking I kind of got like pissed. I was like, I don't fucking want to play this game right now. Like, and I just stopped playing it. And I ended up spending the entire Sunday watching football and doing nothing else. I literally didn't play a video game. And then I played it again on Monday, and I had a little bit more fun with it, but I was still kind of annoyed with it. And I, basically, what ended up happening is I kind of fell back into Grim Dawn, <laughs> into Grim Dawn's arms. <laughs> as a result, Lord, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and I've been playing that for about a week, dude. And I've made a new character, and I'm level 82 um, out of 100 in this week. I've been playing, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with the game. But I'm just like, yeah, I don't really want to go back to play Fell Seal right now. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Like, I, I feel like I'm, I might just skip. A, skip to Sekiro or something at some point I think the issue that I've ran into is I was playing it I was playing it for fun and then I was playing it for the podcast now don't get me wrong I love the podcast but I I, I, you're getting you're getting to the root of the problem yeah yeah and uh, I think that's what we were both. You were playing Fail Sale probably for the podcast as well. But you were playing it for fun, and yep. then you were playing it for the podcast. Yeah. So sometimes you can't mix business and pleasure. You got to play the games that you want to play. Want to play? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and, and dude, so I think you're hitting the nail on the head because I, because dude, we've played a lot of games in the last like calendar month. Oh my god! <laughs> like for real, and it, it, way more than I usually play. Um, in that period of time. So I really felt like I just kind of needed a break from this stuff. Yeah, like, cause yeah. it was due to, it was uh Jedi fallen order who we just mentioned three Pokemon, yep. Pokemon shield. And then I was into fell seal and I was thinking about getting into Sekiro and it's just like, it was too many games and too short over time that I usually I, like if, if I, we weren't doing the podcast, I wouldn't have done this. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's just not how I game, you know? Um, 
generally speaking. I'm not somebody who binges games really quickly a yeah, lot. Yeah. And I've I've been feeling this like not pressure, but like obligation almost to play these games for the podcast because I want to finish a lot of stuff before the end of the year so we can talk about it in game of the year. But yeah, I think I hit a fatigue point like a week and a half ago and that and it unfortunately just fell on Felsiel. Um, and I, yeah, I, I just kind of fell out of it. You weren't around and we weren't doing the show for two weeks. So I just kind of like, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm playing something for me, you know? Yeah, it just exactly. turned into Grim Dawn. And I, I got back into, um, Fire Emblem too, as well. And, um, uh, really enjoying that game again. Like, but yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I, I just don't know if I'm going to play anything else before the end of the year, as much as I want to, like, I want to play Sekiro. I want to play Outer Worlds. But I'm, dude, I just like I'm really having fun with Grim Dawn right now, and I, I'm not gonna I, stop myself from playing I, it. So I just think we're at the point now, like uh, we're. I think a lot of gamers at this point, um, honestly, even without the podcast and things of that nature, just yeah. normal gamers. I think uh, this is what a lot of people leave out in the media is gamer fatigue because I don't see any any uh it's a real articles thing. about it or anything like that. And it's no a one real talks thing. about. It. Yeah, and. Yeah, we were fatigued. And I think normal people who are like, I don't, well, I don't like using the term hardcore gamer, but like hardcore gamers like us who are like into the industry and everything like that, they get it too. To where like your fallback game was Grim Dawn. My fallback game is like yep. League of Legends. No matter how right. like gamer fatigue, I can, I can just pop that in real quick. I can literally and, play it anytime. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but games like, you know, Sekiro and. Even I say to Pokemon, some games like that, like I don't know, it just seems like I, I got to be. They in take a certain... something out of you. Yeah, they take yeah. Something out of you. Every yeah. game, every one of those kind of games could take something out of you. As much as yeah. I liked Pokemon and you enjoy Sekiro, I think we both had the same kind of thing. Is like by the end of Pokemon, dude, I don't want to ever play that game. <laughs> I was just like, whatever, I'm done with this fucking game, you know. Um, and like. That Nothing happened to me with Jedi too, Fallen yeah. Order. As much as like my opinion of the game isn't negative, by the end of it, I've played it so much in such a short period of time, I don't want to play it anymore. Yeah, and you my know? thing with Sekiro is I'm trying to do everything on the first one. You can definitely tell they designed that game for New Game Plus and New Game Plus yeah. runs, but yeah. I'm trying to do everything on the first run, and it's like it's really That's draining. That's a lot. Yeah, That's exactly. Lot. Yeah. So I think I'm just gonna like finish the game stop bullshit and why don't right. finish it and I, I think that's something you have to do at some point that's what happened with pokemon because yeah last time i talked about pokemon i was up i was up battling doing the final battle and i finished it but there's a lot of stuff post game that happens um that you have to do and i did a lot of that stuff but it's a lot of time investment there it's like yeah. hours like yeah. it's, oh wow it's not it's not something you get finished in an hour like it took like five six hours or so to like get through it all and by the end of it, I was done. I didn't, like, when I beat Leon, I was kind of done with the game, but there was more, and I wanted to experience it. And it just kind of started getting my nerves at a certain point. <laughs> I just wanted it to be over. So when it was, it was kind of relieving. But then I just jumped straight into Fell Seal, and it, I don't know, it, it just, yeah, it didn't get the juices flowing for me. So Yeah, I um, guess, like, one more point before we move on. Uh, I think a lot of gamers feel the need, especially with the pressure of social media and things of that nature. We feel the pressure to try all these games when they come out and things of that nature a lot of people do and a lot of people don't so don't i know people are like well i don't do that i'm i'm not insecure of my gaming but a lot of people do and uh unfortunately if this was my full-time job like if i didn't have a job or anything like that then yeah like i would love to you know maybe play Sekiro, you know 20 30 hours for the day or whatever the week and then switch over to another game and I'm yeah. still getting paid for doing this, you know. But, like, yeah. unfortunately, we have real lives and real jobs, so we right. can't do that, you know. Right. So, I mean, I guess this is different from, like, a reviewer who has whose only singular job is, like, finish this by next Wednesday, and that's all they're doing. That's their job is to finish right. this, this thing by Wednesday or whatever. <laughs> Whereas compared to, like, a normal person who has a job, they have to go to work eight hours, 12 hours a day or something like that, and they mm -hmm. want to come on and play the game, they may feel left behind because of all these games because i mean there's too many coming out yeah yeah a ton of games came out this past mm -hmm. six months i say oh yeah and uh i haven't been able to keep up with them yeah so to me it's like <clears throat> yeah for this show we're, we're probably going to talk about this more next week um but like 
for this show, I never want to be in a position where I don't want to play games. Like I don't want to burn myself out. And I think I was kind of getting close to that here and I needed to take a step back. You know, I, I love this podcast and I want to talk about games for this podcast, but sometimes there's going to be periods of time, man, where I'm just, Oh yeah. I'm not playing current stuff. Yeah. I totally understand. Uh, I totally under, I totally get that. Like that's why I haven't touched Death Stranding. Like honestly, that probably would have been a hot bucket, a hot button topic for us, and we probably would have got a. But see, we stay true to ourselves, guys. We're not we're not shilling out. Like that would have been like a probably a high click thing for us. But you know, we both were. I'm just not in a headspace to play that game. Exactly. exactly. My understanding of it is that it's it's like 50 hours at least. Yeah, and we want. I want to give people a quality experience or a quality opinion of the game. Yeah. You know, and so that's just not a game that I was in the headspace to play at that time. I'm actually like thinking about it now. Um, actually, this is a public service announcement for everybody out there listening. Uh, apparently, Redbox is getting out of the game rentals business, so they are selling off all of their game stock, and that includes Jedi Fallen Order and Death Stranding, which are new games. They're selling them for twenty five bucks right now, um, just a disc. And I was thinking about picking up Death Stranding because it's a great price for it right now. But then I'm like, am I going to play it right now? No, probably not. So why am I going to pick it up? But I'm like kind of going back and forth on it. It does sound like a really relaxing game to play right now because it's like yeah. chill. It's yeah. not like a, it's not like a, it's not like playing Sekiro. That's like really high focus, high energy, you know, in your face. Yeah. You constantly yeah. have to be paying attention. Like it's a game you can kind of, I don't know, like you got to pay attention, but you know, it's chill. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, you know what? That kind of gave me a revelation. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. We, we we're going on, on guys. <laughs> guys, uh, it's gonna be a meaty show. I'm warning yeah, you now. Like. Yeah. Oof. Just uh, I think that's why games like Harvest Moon and games like Animal Crossing exist. Like. Right. Just to like. Chill Change out. Change pace. Yeah. Change the pace, man. They have a place. Yeah, and. I know I was harping on those games like off mic, but. I kind of see the quality. I kind of see the the experience of why people play them. Like some people just want to use it as a little mini vacation. Oh, I want to be on the beach at on a you know Animal Crossing, or I want to go guarding on Animal Crossing real quick and just get some yeah. crops and you know yeah. progress yeah. and then jump out. And I think that's pretty cool. That's how people play The Sims and things of that nature. So I see why these games have their their you know space in gaming. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, enough of that. Let's move on to the news. We have a ton. Of news in the last two weeks. It's fucking ridiculous. So let's let's start going through it. So first piece of news. Uh, this was from a couple weeks ago, but uh, it's a piece of news to note. So um, Sony CEO Jim Ryan uh, spoke to Game Informer a couple weeks ago and basically was saying, um, talking about the PlayStation Vita and handhelds in general. And uh, this was a quote uh, to Game Informer. PlayStation Vita was brilliant in many ways, and the actual gaming experience was great, but clearly it's a business that we're no longer in now. And yeah, he didn't support it, or they didn't support it. Um, And then Jack Trenton, for the same, uh, actually spoke to IGN. Uh, He's the former CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, said that, quote, now that I don't work there anymore, I think internally it was, this is a great machine, it's just too late. The world has shifted to portable devices that aren't dedicated gaming machines. And this, this it's the funny. It's funny so to wrong. say that. I know, it, but it's so funny to hear him say this because this is literally how they treated the Vita. It explains everything. Yeah, like, I mean, this was obvious that this was their internal viewpoint of the Vita because they they abandoned that thing within six months. Like they had just abandoned ship already. They didn't give a shit about the Vita. It was like they just let it die. I'm surprised they were still making it up until, you know, a few months ago. Yeah, like, yeah, I, and. I don't know. They, I mean, the thing is, they're they're like they're not considering Nintendo a handheld. I don't think they consider Nintendo a handheld. I really, it, it is a handheld, but it is, it a, is handheld. a handheld. I mean, Nintendo doesn't consider it a handheld though either, and I don't know. They're lying to themselves because it is a handheld. Yeah, I, yeah. I I play that thing in handheld mode ninety percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, I, like, you're the only person I know who play that who plays it on the TV. Like it, legitimately, it's only for certain games. Yeah, exactly. Something yeah. that's cinematic, like Fire Emblem or something like that. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'll play that on the TV. But most games, yeah, handheld mode, dude. I don't like it. Is I don't care. You know, it's it's so good in handheld mode. So the fact that they're saying this is like, it's so frustrating to hear because Sony, like, they're just seeding the handheld hill to Nintendo. 
There's no reason for them to do that, you know? Like, at least put up a fight. Put something out there, you know? You guys competed with them with the PSP, and I don't know. They just, they just like, I feel like if they put real effort into a handheld, they could compete in that market again, but they just don't, they don't seem interested in it. They're focused on PlayStation and the, the, the core console experience, I guess, but it's disappointing to hear for me. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. It's just it's pretty weird. Like I I can't even say that. Like well, I can't say that. It's just weird because everyone thought Nintendo was down and out and then they came out with this tech called the Switch and then it just brought them back. And I mean, they're here to stay, too. They're strong. Yeah, dude. exactly. And people and everyone doubted this. Like even I doubted. It. I'm like, what the fuck? Like this is not going to work. I did too. But that- it works. That press conference that revealed it was one That's of the worst terrible. things I've ever seen. But it yeah. didn't matter. It didn't matter. They had Zelda, and it was ready for prime time. I mean, the thing is solid. It's a solid piece of hardware. Yeah. And it's it's so bad because everyone looked at that, or now now we look at it now, and we're like, this could have been the Vita. Like, the Vita could have yeah. been the competitor for the Switch, especially in Japan because everyone's portable over there. Everyone's always on the go. Yeah. So, yeah. The simple fact that they're getting out of that market and they're just giving all of Japan to Nintendo. In my opinion, they just lost the whole territory. They just gave them all of Japan. Pretty much. I mean, PlayStation's already not doing very well in Japan. Um, Xbox wow, really? obviously has never done well in Japan. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's still a strong market for them, but it is not their primary market. I mean, think about it. When they released the PlayStation 4, they allocated the entirety of their stock to the U.S. Ah, uh, yeah, When they right. launched it. It was entirely entirely to the United States, and their headquarters now is in is North the, America. Got, yep, is, is in North America. States. They're not they're not centered in Japan anymore. They just they're just not. It's it's just the reality of Sony, and I think they accept that. And I don't think they care about Japan anymore. <laughs> it's just not Holy a, shit! <laughs> I I don't think I don't think they view it as an important market. Market, dude, think about the things they've been doing lately with the the uh, the like. The weeb games where they're fucking uh, censoring those games now, where they're starting to censor like the the kind of uh, risque visual novel games and those those like Japanese games that that are really uh, push the limits of what's acceptable yeah, yeah. with you know young younger girls being portrayed in those games and even females in general in yeah. those games. They're censoring those games now, whereas Nintendo isn't, uh, Steam isn't. You know, it's like they 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 have a different mentality now i don't think they care about that market i think a lot of their decision making just points to that as the reality with them like it just that's just is what it is sony's an american company at this point <laughs> or at least playstation is i mean that's i mean if you had told me this maybe in 2004 like i would not have bl- believed oh, you fuck. of course not like that's that's crazy to times me. have changed man yeah man that's wild now you're gonna tell me in about ten, seven more, seven to ten more years, Xbox a dominant conglomerate in fucking Japan. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never happen. I mean, Microsoft. What if it does? What Microsoft if it does? can't. The, Microsoft can't do anything right. So you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe they 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 pull some out their ass, and this is just a hit in Japan. Or maybe this new uh, this new like brick they're trying to sell people will you know take over. Hey, man, that Japan. brick looks nice. I mean. Uh, spoilers <laughs> we'll get to that later all right let's move on uh another sony related article uh, uh news announcement rather um they just announced this today and this uh very interesting thing so they are they are making a it's called a dual shock for back button attachment that is basically going to be this thing that you plug into your dual shock for in the bottom of it and it will give you extra button inputs that you can customize on your uh, DualShock 4 controller. And it's not, doesn't allow macros, but you can map any button on the controller to these buttons. So you can map your shoulder buttons, your face buttons, yeah. anything to these these particular buttons. And you can have different profiles as well, similar to like gaming uh, controllers on PC and stuff, and uh, keyboards. But it's going to be $30, and it is releasing, uh, I think, in January. I think it was January 28th. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, no, January 23rd, 2020, 23rd, okay. for uh, twenty nine ninety nine. I think it looks fucking cool. It's just a little bit too late. Now, I wonder if it's going to be compatible with the PS5 when that comes out. Yeah, so 
the fact that it's so late makes me think that it is going to be compatible with PS5. Like it would be kind of weird that it that they'd re- release this. What and if then... they redesign their controllers? Because we don't we know nothing about the PS5 right now. We don't know if they're going to do a DualShock Five or. Well, there is a DualShock Five. There have been patents and leaks and whatnot. We haven't yeah, okay. really talked about it on the show very much because I just I'm I don't really want to talk about that stuff until it's like real. yeah, until it's finally revealed, right? Yeah. Until it's actually revealed. But according to those current patents, this thing would not be compatible with those. Um, it does not have the same uh, plug setups at the bottom of the controller that the current DualShock 4 has, which is fine. But to me, it's like I feel like this thing has got to be compatible with the DualShock 5. Like it just seems silly to release this thing literally less than a year before the next console is going to come out if it's not going to work with the next console. As far yeah. as hardware wise, I, I, I know we <laughs> I don't like to really shit on Sony, but. I just sometimes I just feel Sony's really incompetent with their hardware sometimes, and I really feel like they're really bad with timing. Yeah, and I, it's a tossing. It's like a fifty fifty for me. Like people might it right. make it makes sense to us, like common sense folk. Like, oh yeah, if it comes out this close to the PS Five, it has to be compatible with the PS Five or the mm-hmm. DualShock Five. But like yeah. just knowing Sony's history with hardware, it's it hard be. for me to. <laughs> You say what? <laughs> it won't be. Yeah, it's just yeah. hard for me to agree with that statement, right? It's just I don't know. They they're just really really bad with their hardware. Yeah. No, um, they just this, have a but this thing is good though. They got bad planning with their stuff. Like they don't plan their stuff out very well. Yeah, and yeah. They they come out with an idea and like, "Oh, this is a cool idea. Rush it out." And then that's it. Like I'm honestly surprised that they're still supporting the PSVR, the PlayStation VR. Like they're committed to that thing. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised. I thought they were going to drop it. But yeah, this thing is cool though. They did mention uh, several times that it is meant for competitive play. Um, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a that that that's cool and all. But I think this will be actually really useful for regular gamers as well because what this thing allows you to do basically is remap the control scheme of any game, literally any game you want. The first game that came to mind for me is like Final Fantasy fourteen. If you play that on the controller, yeah, that would be a great game for it. Um, even probably COD, I'm sure you could see it. Yeah. For um, and there's other games too that have had poor. Any game that has a poor control scheme that doesn't work for you, yeah, you can yeah. remap with this thing now. I mean, obviously the the buttons you're getting are on the back of the controller, but I mean we've seen a lot of game design. Uh, this generation has really shifted to using the tr- the triggers. Yeah. For primary actions rather than using the face buttons. Face buttons are just not nearly as used as they they were before back yeah, in the PS3 I agree. generation. And for good reason, because they're they're clunky. They take you away from the sticks and that's not that that, that hurts your ability to control your character in a lot of these games, particularly yeah. action games. So I think it's a good um I think it's a good shift. It makes a lot of sense because you, you have to have full control of your character in, in these games for them to feel good to me. Yeah, at least. yeah. So, um, I like this thing. I think thirty bucks is is a little overpriced. Um, it's half the well, price of the it's, controller. It's like touchscreen, so it has a tech in there for that. That's why I think it is thirty bucks because yeah. it's yeah. touchscreen. Well, part of the the controller is touchscreen. The other parts are actual physical buttons. Right. Um. Right. So I think that's why the tech is priced the way it is. Yeah. 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 I think so. Um. So it's pretty cool. If you want to get one, January twenty third, I would check it out. Um, they have an official release on the PlayStation blog about it too. So, all right, moving on. Um, another Sony century story. We have a lot of a lot of Sony news, a lot of Xbox news. Ooh, this we're week. shielding up the Sony. Uh, yeah, fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this one, oof, this one, this one is fucking fascinating. So I have some interesting thoughts about this. Please continue. Yes. So Sony uh, and the MLB have an agreement where they are allowed, uh, Sony has exclusive rights to make baseball games. Okay. Um, MLB has their own baseball game called uh, RBI Baseball that they make internally, um, but that's the only other baseball game that exists. Um, Sony makes the show. Sony San Diego makes the show. Um, They make it every year, and it is a PlayStation 4 exclusive, and it has been forever. But this is going to change. So Sony and the MLB released a joint statement on December 9th. So... I quote, Major League Baseball, the Major League Baseball Players Association, Sony Interactive Entertainment, and San Diego Studio jointly announced today that they have entered into a multi-year extension to continue development and distribution of MLB The Show, the award-winning officially licensed video game. In addition, the historic expansion of the long-standing partnership 
will bring MLB The Show for the first time ever to additional console platforms beyond PlayStation platforms as early as 2021. Complete details will be announced at a later date. So that's pretty much the meat of it. That's the main part of it that matters here. Um, so the show is going to be coming to, quote, other platforms, meaning Xbox, Nintendo, likely PC as well, in the future in 2020, starting in 2021. And this, this, is, this honestly is the biggest thing that's happened in the last two weeks. I, barring, I know the other stuff we're going to talk about, like yeah, the yeah, awards yeah. And, and state of play. This oh, is literally the this, biggest thing that's happened in the last two weeks. This, this is fucking earth shattering. <laughs> yeah, this rocked like the PlayStation t- fanboy Twitter. People were up in arms about this. And I have no idea why. I think this is great for all gamers to experience yeah, MLB the yeah. show. Um, but I saw one guy who's actually has a really big following on YouTube and he has a really big following on Twitch. It's not like super huge like Angry Joe, but it's a, it's there to make right. a presence. Yeah. And uh he was just going he he's denouncing PlayStation. He's like, This is this is the most egregious thing he's ever seen in his life. He he couldn't believe it. Really? He's, Really? Yes. He, People he, have these opinions. Yes. He's Are you like, fucking bro, kidding me? He's, he's like, if PlayStation goes through with this, this is the worst thing. He's like, I'm done playing video games. Okay, my answer to this guy is fucking get your head on straight, bro. They literally didn't have a choice. The, the, their hand was forced here. This is the most obvious thing imaginable to me. This is a licensing agreement. They, they they announced in this that they have a multi year extension to continue having exclusive rights to develop these games. MLB likely, very likely, I would say ninety nine point nine percent likely was like, hey Sony, we're sick of this game only being on PlayStation Four. So, either you release it on other platforms, Xbox, Nintendo, PC, or we're gonna 100%. let other companies we're gonna let other companies make baseball games. And 100%. Sony was, of course, is not gonna be like, oh well, fine, sure. Because what would that would have done as well is they might have lost the license themselves. And EA in that would pick it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They might not have been able to make baseball games at all anymore if this fell through. So they didn't have a choice in the matter. It, they have to cow to the MLB's demands, and I'm going to guarantee you that was the demand. That's the only reason this would have happened. Because if it, um, if Sony wanted to do this, they would have done it fucking years ago. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> so it's clear who wanted this. Yeah, and, he was. I mean, everyone that was like, you know, t- trying to, you know, comment to him and everything like that was just like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. And like, you're just going on a tangent. And he was like, dead serious. You, you, you brought people brought like really good points up. Like, this is really good for gaming and things of that nature. And, and then people brought the point like you just made, saying like maybe their hand was forced or. You know, yeah. maybe MLB wanted someone else to make it, but Sony had to do this and then that third. And there are a lot of people who feel like this. Like, he's not the only one. A lot of people feel like That's Sony crazy. betrayed them in some... Betrayed them. Yes, like, <laughs> betrayed them in some way. And can, we, can we stop this? This is this console war bullshit is just, just out of control. Like, can yes. we fucking stop? Oh, my God. There's, n- like, there, there's nothing bad about this. I, I mean, I can see if for, someone... For the gamer, for the gamer, there's nothing really bad about this. It's not. It's nothing bad about this at all. I mean, I can see people getting up in arms. There was like, if he lost, if Sony lost the rights to like God of War, right? And they're like, oh, it's going to be on other platforms. But then again, it's like, okay, whatever. I, other people yeah. get to experience God of War. Xbox players get to experience right. God of War. PC right. players get to experience that. Like, I don't know. It's just, right. It's just crazy. I don't know. That's just weird to me. Yeah, no, I think it. I think this. I think the situation is really cut and dry. I think Sony didn't have a choice, and I think I don't think they were very happy about this because this this uh, statement was released in like the dead of night, the day before State of Play was happening a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, they, they would have done it in the State of Play. They literally didn't want to announce this. Like, I I think they don't they, they, they don't view this as in a positive way. Um, clearly, and it and then the problem with them. The problem for them is that now they have to they have to make the game for Xbox, Switch, PC, which means it's going to be more work for Sony yeah. San Diego, and that's a problem for them yeah. because that could hurt the quality of the game, which is not exactly. a good thing. Yeah. They either have to staff up, so it's it's going to cost them money in order to make this game on multiple platforms. Now, I will say that it's probably going to net out to make them more money overall. They're going to oh, sell yeah. more copies of this game than they normally do. But this game is a big seller on PlayStation. This game sells at least eight million copies, eight to ten million copies a year. Like it is a, it is a big seller on the console. So, 
I wouldn't necessarily classify it as a system seller. I don't I don't look at it that way. I don't I don't think it is. I I, I, don't, I think it is. I think it's just people who have PlayStation right. get this game. Right. Sony might look at it that way though. Yeah, which is right. why they don't want to release it on other platforms because they're going to lose those people. I mean, I think at this point, this late in the generation, it's not that big of a deal. But for next gen, it could. It, they it, might it look is. at it as a problem. Yeah, so. I can see that. I can see that. Because uh, I mean, they are the only place you can play a baseball game that is good, that is like triple A high quality. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, for me, I don't know. I just, I think it's a little. It's kind of. It's kind of mean to even be mad at Sony for this. It's like, what what else are they supposed to do? You know, what <laughs> they betrayed you? Like, how did they betray you by doing this? I don't, I don't understand. Man, the the things that I saw people were saying were, Ugh. were pretty wild. It was something else that happened that PlayStation did too, and people were just like going up in arms about it. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Crazy, crazy world we live in. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. It's good for, I, I, like you said, I think it's good for everybody. So it's good for Xbox gamers. It's going to be good for PC players that want to play this game. So, um, yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Um, next story. Um, so this is, uh, so we had three different things happen in the in the past two weeks, uh, game announcement related. So we had a state of play. We had a Nintendo indie live stream, and then we had the Game Awards. <laughs> So we're going to go through all three of those. We're going to start with the state of play first. So um, this was pretty short. It was it was, uh, it was was less than 20 minutes, I think, or it was around 20 minutes, I think it was. Um, but it was, honestly, uh, looking back on it in retrospect, was really not that exciting. But in the moment, it was decent, I guess. It felt pretty good. Um, so they officially announced uh, Resident Evil 3. Um remaster and they uh gave it a date of april 3rd 2020 in this stream uh this would have been a huge announcement had it not been leaked obviously so that kind of took some wind out of their sails a little bit with the with the state of play stream as a whole but this is uh this is basically what i expected i know i said a couple weeks ago when we were talking about the leak that i figured it would come out next year and (laughs) you i know you didn't agree with me at the time but it just felt like this was really imminent given the fact that it was a store page that had leaked. Yeah. And yeah. It seems crazy though, that Capcom is pooping these games out so fast. Cause like literally not even 12 months ago, we had resident evil two remake. So they clearly had this in development well before that game came out. Well, I think the reason they, they pooped this one not really fast is because they take place in the same town. Yeah. So they so can reuse the assets. Yeah. So they can, yeah. Like you said, reuse assets. Uh, it pretty much kind of cross overlaps with Resident Evil 2. Well, timeline-wise, Resident Evil 3 takes place right before Resident Evil 2. So, yeah. like they can they I think they're really going to just reuse the same assets, same police station, they just move some stuff around, things of that nature. Uh put a couple extra character models in there and they got a, uh, they got a complete game. I mean, they already got the coding for Mr. X to follow you around. So, in Resident Evil 3, Nemesis follows you around. So change mm-hmm. some scripted events, and then you got you got the same game. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot. Of, some things happen differently. So uh, I think that's why they were able to turn out this game really good. Another thing I'm really proud of is that um, that pro- that project uh, Resident Evil project game that was coming out. It's a multiplayer game. Is this? Yeah. Well, it's this not. Is, this was this was angled as the single player component to Project Resistance. Yeah, which yeah. Is Resident so, Evil. Yeah, 3. it's an add on. I think they said yeah. to it. Yeah. So, which I'm happy about, and it's not a full game. So, I mean, right. I think that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah. So there was that. Uh, the next thing was uh, Platinum Games basically announced the first play- PlayStation Five game, <laughs> uh, Babylon's Fall, um, and it is. It looks like an action game, uh, pretty typical Platinum Games fare. Uh, it looked pretty good to me. Yeah, it looks like a cross between Nier and, uh, like, well, not story-wise, but, like, combat-wise. Combat-wise, bet- yeah. Between Nier and Devil May Cry. Like, it, it yeah. really gave me a, a, a Devil May Cry mm-hmm. uh, vibe. Yeah. Not really Bayonetta, but more so Devil May Cry, things of that nature. Yeah. Um, But the Nier, it gave me that Nier focus, too, how you can dodge and things of that nature, so... Uh, I really think they're trying to compete with Capcom because Capcom came out with Devil May Cry, so now they're like, "Oh, we got to get our guns back." Right. And I'm glad they have that competition because it's better for, bu- for both of us, for yeah. our gamers in general, I should say. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't get much in terms of story or anything like that, so I'm not sure how I really feel about it per se, but Yeah. I mean uh, <laughs> usually Platinum Games story is pretty bad, so Yeah, well yeah. Nier is like one of the only exceptions and I, I think that game was exclusively written by Square Enix. So, it was, it was. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't <laughs> think they had anything to do with story there. So Yeah. Um but we'll see. I guess we'll see. This this clearly looked like a PS five game. Um I think it was announced as that actually, wasn't it? I think they said I'm not it was next too sure. gen. I think they said it was next gen. It was like a next gen game, so um yeah. So, um, next thing, uh, they gave a release date to Predator Hunting Grounds. The uh, asymmetric multiplayer game uh, is coming out in 20, uh, April 24, 2020. Um, nothing really to say about it. It doesn't really look that great. It's, yeah, it's a movie. It's a movie licensed game, so you already yeah. know how those go. There's yeah. only a handful of good movie licensed. What's some good movie licensed games? Uh, like, specifically surrounding a movie? Well, I, I I guess you can say that. I don't Spider -Man know. Spider-Man 2? Yeah, that was a good game. Yeah, Spider-Man 2 was good. Uh, uh, I would say Peter uh, Jackson's King Kong. That game was groundbreaking at <laughs> the time. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good game. Uh, that's funny. Uh, I can't really think of anything else, though. Me either. Movie time game. So. Oh, maybe Enter the Matrix. That was a really good game. Was it? Yeah, okay. I like that. I like that uh, game. And Path of Neo was really good, too. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Um, they also announced uh, Untitled Goose Game is coming to PS4. It's actually already out uh, when you're hearing this. Uh, it came out on the 17th of December. And Which is the day of recording. Yeah, this game just looks so f hilarious. I just, I just love I'm the, telling you, man, it's a really I good. I just love the concept of it. It's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it's, really, it's a really good game. You just sit down and play it real quick and you hop out. Yeah. Well, these are the kind of indies, man, that I just love that are just, like, so dumb and, like, <laughs> they don't even, they just embrace their stupidity, and it's, like, the best thing. And th these are the type of indie games I like. I don't, it doesn't follow the whole retro thing that everyone's trying to do and everything of that nature. Yeah, they, they made their own concept. Exactly, and I love that. I yeah. love that. You're literally a fucking goose who just steals people's, like, keys and <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> you just walk around and, and go, wah, wah, to people. Like, it's... <laughs> It's it's fucking ridiculous. When you play the game, it's one of those games you can stream, like watch a streamer play it and have oh, fun yeah. with. Yeah. But if you're just like watching a Let's Play, it's not going to be fun. But if you're watching like a streamer or you're playing it yourself with some people mm -hmm. maybe, like it's yeah. really fucking fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, ooh, this was uh, this one. So this one was funny. So uh, before this day to play, uh, Media Molecule and Sony announced that the Dream's early access period was ending. Um, this ended about a week and a half ago probably. Um and on this day to play they dated dreams for February fourteenth, twenty twenty. So they are kind of just pooping this game out. Um, at this point, I think they they're getting it out the door finally. <laughs> but the thing is, is I if I'm if I'm right about when they're gonna announce the console, they're gonna fucking bury this game in the news cycle because I really do think they're gonna announce the console like the PS five in February, and. <sighs> like having this game anywhere near that is just a bad idea in general. So, well, um, it's going to be backwards compatible so people can still, well, I mean, I'm so just far. talking about in terms of news, like relevance, any relevance this game has will be completely nullified by. Oh PlayStation yeah. 5 yeah. Reveal. Like, yeah. and, and I don't really think this game is going to be super relevant, but the, these, these creative games, like, like uh, Little Big Planet and some of the stuff that Media Molecule has done in the past, they usually have a pretty good uh, long period of time in the news cycle where a lot of people are talking about them because of yeah, the creations yeah. that are happening. Yeah. But, dude, if, I mean, if PS5 is coming out, man, like, I just, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking. I, I don't know. Like, it, I just think this game is destined to fail. It just doesn't feel like something that um, gamers are going to be particularly interested in you know it's just like it like when they were showing it they keep they keep keying on the creation tools and they're not showing what the game is still i think like, that even is in the, the state game. of play it is the game but they keep insisting that there's a single player campaign and oh really yeah and i don't know what that is mm. you know that's and, pretty I mean, that's not really cool the creations look cool but i mean you're trying to sell a video game engine basically like unity or unreal in a box well, in like target a, a, like it's it's not gonna work, you well, know. It, it worked with little. I would say little big planet is 
to an extent a gaming engine. But that was a game though. It had a, like a story and like a, not a story, but it had a campaign. Like it had levels that you played. Like they haven't shown that with this so far, you know? Yeah. I think so. this this is one of these titles that should have been like almost a launch game for the PS4 or maybe it a should second have. a second or third year game for it. Uh, I think what it's a, a little bit late. <laughs> uh, they should have just waited to the PS5 honestly. Dude, eight years they've been working on this game. What about this game? Do you screams a game that should be should have been working on for eight years? Yeah, uh, nothing. Eight years. Well, then again, I'm not a creative. I mean, I, I am a creative, but I'm not a person that likes to create within the own engine of another person's game. If that makes right. any sense. Right. So, I, I mean, we'll see. I mean, we this game may. Nah, man. Just be honest with yourself. This game's gonna die. <laughs> it's just. It is. It just is. Usually, I'm the negative Nancy. No, dude. And... It's just the writing's been on the wall for a long time. Like, because there's been a thing. There's been a thing with the, with the the early access. They said when they launched early access that there was going to be a limited number of slots for the early access. And yeah. They launched the early access in like April. The game was never not purchasable, which means they never filled the slots for the entirety of the eight months that it was in early access. That's really bad. Like what is how many slots were there? Like maybe five thousand at most, ten thousand. Like that's nothing for a game. Of yeah, they this did. They did caliber. announce like people are gonna be knocking at the door for this. That didn't happen at all. So, yeah. Mm, interesting. I'll be surprised if this game sells a million copies. I'm just being honest about that. All right. Eight years, holy shit! Eight years, yes. I'm gonna keep. Let's keep going here. Um, so there really wasn't much else in the state of play. Just a uh, couple minor games. Um, something called Spellbreak. Uh, Perception is reality, which I think is a VR game, and then Paper Beast. Um, nothing that really jumped out to me here. Uh, but there was a short tease of Ghost of Tsushima that they were basically show more of the game awards. So it didn't didn't really amount to much for the state of play. It was kind of a lame way to end the str- to end the state of play actually, um, in my opinion. So um let us continue on unless you have anything else to say about the state of play. Uh, actually what do you think of these after what, three of three of them we've had now? Or four? With the state of play? I didn't watch this one. The fr- I didn't watch this presentation of the state of play. Um, but so from what the, I'm seeing, that's this the point. That's the point we're at with these. Is they're not even getting you jazzed to watch them. <laughs> I honestly didn't even see any hype around it. Like people usually like, oh man, I heard the next Nintendo <laughs> Nintendo Direct leak. Like people are already like mm-hmm. the timelines. My timelines already hype about it. I see nothing about this. Nothing, and it just popped up. Uh, so. I, I, yeah, I'm at that state now where I just don't care because sometimes the last one, the last couple ones they've shown have not shown me anything. But this one looked like it was actually pretty good. But uh, the I just, last we got to be patient, man. Yeah, I, th- I think the thing is, is w- once we hit PS5 and they start announcing PS5 exclusives that their companies are working on, I think that's when these are start start being high octane. Yeah, and right yeah. now we're we're just in an awkward place for Sony where they don't have a lot to talk about, and and the things they do have to talk about they accidentally leak on their fucking store with Resident Evil 3. Yeah. So it's like they're taking their wind out of their own sails, and then they don't even yep. show us Ghost of Tsushima. They save that for the Game Awards just so they can have something at the Game Awards to show. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. They took, like, I don't even know. This was really poorly positioned as a state of play, so they didn't do themselves any favors with this one. Um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold fast here and say that they, these will get better over the next year to two years. Um, I know that's a lot of time to really like have or give them for this, but um, I just think they don't have a lot of high octane announcements that they hadn't already announced, really. So once we hear PS PS Five, I think the one after that, whatever that state of play is after that, maybe they do one for E Three. I don't know. Um, that one will probably be a lot better than these. So. All right, let's move on. So Nintendo also had a Nintendo indie live stream the same week. <laughs> As um, the state <laughs> of play, assholes, yo. I know they, they they literally did it. I think the day after, or the same day as the state of play, it was like they literally were like the, the like within a few hours of each other. It was ridiculous. Um, so this was actually uh, not bad. I watched this whole thing, and they announced uh, Axiom Verge Two is coming to Nintendo Switch, and I don't know. I didn't get the impression though that it was exclusive. Um. 
because that would be kind of crazy if it was because the first Axiom Verge was made by one dude. Um, I think his name's Tom Happ, and he uh, he released it on all platforms at the time. And yeah, yeah. This one, I, being exclusive to Nintendo Switch would be crazy. So I think he was just announcing it here because it's probably the most relevant platform for his game. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, this is kind of a big announcement because that game was pretty popular. Um, it, is a, it is a Metroidvania um, 2D um sprites uh it it's it's a cool looking game it's not something that i really got excited about when it came out but a lot of people really liked this game at the time so um that will be coming out so uh, they dated it for next year they didn't actually give a specific date but they said 2020 um in the stream so we'll see if they can hit he can hit that date rather um uh dauntless uh got uh yeah released on switch and the day i of the will get this for the switch i think this would be a perfect game when i'm not when I'm on the go and I don't want to play Monster Hunter uh, mm-hmm. Generations because they might mess up my hun- Monster Hunter play <laughs> or Monster right. Hunter World, right. I think this would be an excellent game to play on the go, and I'm definitely going to pick it. Because Dauntless is not a good game. I played the beta. I love the beta. Uh, but that, unfortunately, killed any... Uh, when Monster Hunter World was released, I'm like, oh, whoop, okay, I'm not playing Dauntless anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Dauntless is a good game. I recommend it to any Monster Hunter player uh, to pick it up. I don't like the free-to-play aspect of it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't love that either. I don't really like the aesthetic either. I think the aesthetic is is not appealing for me, personally. It, it does have a little bit of a um. I like it because it reminds me of Fable. If you remember that game from the Xbox, mm, mm. and the aesthetic looks like a Fable game, and I love the aesthetic of the Fable games. So that's yeah. what it reminds me of. So if you don't, if you don't like the aesthetic of Disney, you probably won't like Fable. But uh, yeah, this game's like really cool. Uh, I think the people who made it really love fucking Monster Hunter, and they right. captured... This is the closest game that captured Monster Hunter compared to any other Monster Hunter clone out there. Yes, I'm talking about God Eater. I'm sorry. Yeah, guess I'm talking about God Soul Eater. Soul Sacrifice. Yes, I'm talking about Soul Sacrifice. Yes, I'm talking about... Uh, I think it's called Tadoken. T- T- I'm talking about all oh, those Tukadin, games. Tukadin, yeah. Tukadin, yeah. Tukadin. Um, this game, and Freedom Wars, I, I guess to an extent. Um, <laughs> I don't... I don't. I hate that people put that game in the conversation because it's it's so it's so basic. Like it's a cool, cute game. I liked it, but it's such a basic. It's so basic compared to Monster Hunter. It's like not even. Yeah. It's not even remotely close. Uh, uh, I think this is one game that Bandai wish they can turn God Eater into because this game is really, really good. I like it. Well, just a little bit of a tease here for later in the show, but we got another game that has entered the arena of the mm. Monster Hunter, the Monster Hunter game. So we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so continue on with this Nintendo live stream. Uh, so Golf Story is getting a sequel called Sports Story, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be launching in mid twenty twenty. Uh, exclusively on the Switch, just like the first game, and uh, this one is going to have more golf in it. But they, it seems like they're really like kind of going bonkers with this game. Like it's going to have every sport imaginable in it. Um, there was like tennis, there was uh, golf, there was all sorts of other stuff, and uh, and it seems like there's a lot of like non-sports stuff. There's like dungeons and stuff that you explore, and I don't know what's going. I don't know what the hell's going on with this game. Golf Story always intrigued me. Because uh, it was like a take on Mario, the GBA Mario Golf games, where you like uh, kinda okay. leveled up and you know leveled your skills up over the course of the game, and you like played in like an academy or whatever. Um, so I don't know what their vision with this game is, because it seems like it's veering like way off that track. So um, I don't know. I I actually do want to play Golf Story. I've always wanted to try it, um, but I've never gotten around to it. So maybe I will before this sequel comes out, because I, I kind of do want to play this. It's it, it looks pretty cool, but um, we'll see. Um, okay, next one. Uh, Talos Principle is also out on Sw- Switch. This is a uh, puzzle game that uh, came out several years ago. Um, it's been out for a while, but it is it is now on Switch. It came out the day of the live stream as well. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Um, then something called uh, Murder by Numbers, <laughs> which is, seems like a it's a mystery game of some sort. Um, it's a visual novel. Um, so... Yeah, it looks like it's a it's a puzzle game actually. Uh you yeah. solve different puzzles. Almost Phoenix Wright or Phoenix Attorney um Yeah, Phoenix Wright. Mm-hmm. Ace Attorney style. Like that's what it reminds me of. A cheaper version of that. It is an indie game, so uh if you like those type of games, you might be interested in this game cuz I might I might pick this game up myself. It mm-hmm. looks pretty interesting cuz I love Phoenix Wright games. 
Yeah, and the last thing to come out of this uh, was something called Skatebird, which is a <laughs> a skateboarding game where you play as a tiny bird who can skateboard. You know what I'm waiting for? A tech deck game. Like you know, the, you remember the little tech decks with the little. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was it was a pretty good stream. Um, it wasn't the best, but um, it was uh, serviceable, I guess. It was probably better than State of Play. But um, Nintendo's still dedicated to indies in a way that Sony is not. So uh, it's cool to see them announce some of these games uh, a lot of the time. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, so this is, uh, we're moving on to the Game Awards. So a lot of shit happened at the Game Awards. It was a really, really big show. Um, it was about three and a half hours long. Um, did you watch the whole thing? Yes, I did. Uh uh, I was kind of late on the stream a little bit, so I was able to skip a lot of the nuanced stuff, like the okay. like the you know, um, like the performances and things of that nature. Yeah. I I will say though, this yeah. has turned, it's well, turned into I, a, a actual award show. show. Like yeah. they did a really good job with the presentation. Okay, like, so last, you you like the actual show? I did. I did like the actual show. Okay. I uh, I thought it was now compared to like. This is compared to their last couple of shows. Like, I remember their first show with, like, Odd Future was terrible. And then the next show, it was kind of awkward. Like, their, mm-hmm. um, the way they segue to certain things. But this one, I mean, it was actually it pretty was all good. Biz- it was all business for the most part. Yeah. So, for me, this is my first one that I've actually watched. Uh, okay. I've never watched the Game, before, Game Awards before this year. Um, this is the fifth year, I believe, they're doing it. And I'm gonna be honest. Uh, these things are just not for me, man. Like, <laughs> really, these shows, these shows feel so pointless to me. Like, it, it's it's just it's just like the 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 music, the musical performances are such a like jarring thing when you're watching it on the internet. You know, like I'm sure live when you're there, the musical performances are awesome and they're great. Yeah, but yeah. this is like watching the Super Bowl halftime show. You know, on television, yeah, they're fucking just so like I'm not. I don't not think engaged. award shows are for you in general because every award show has a musical they're performance. Not. I know, but that's yeah. This is why I'm getting into this is that award shows are not for me because yeah, that that part of it, the musical stuff, like when Green Day came out and you know Jeff Keighley was so excited about Green Day, I was just like, I literally was rolling my eyes, like what the fuck, like I, I, I did that, I, I couldn't and- care less. Like, and that's why I watched it with like a thirty minute delay, so I can skip past skip. all that. Because yeah. I knew they were going to have musical performances, and um, even on regular shows and stuff like that, or regular um, award shows, it's kind of cringy when you watch them. Like all of they them, are. Are. Yeah. yeah. And and then watching Golden Globes, uh, Oscars, whatever the case may be, they all kind of. I just don't think this is good television. Like I don't think this is good entertainment personally. Like I just think the structure of these shows is so like truncated. They, they dude, they rush through so many of the awards where they're just like, uh, yeah. this award, yep, Shroud won the best stream of the year. Yep, uh, moving on. Uh, best uh, best action game was this. You know, now like, that I, I do think they need to work on. Yeah, uh, like I think, best strategy game. Oh, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Congratulations! Like moving yeah, on. They <laughs> like, they, they, just, they need to have uh, like, actual dedicated things i mean some yeah. other award shows do that as well so mm-hmm. i can't just blame it all on them but they they do need to do that they, they need to do a better job of just having a dedicated section for us instead of saying like having jeff Keeley sit on the on the platform like oh this, this is happening okay good guys and then yeah yeah uh but besides that though i did think the presentation was nice i'm glad a lot of people showed up to it uh it shows that people t- are taking well, this is these- legit now this is like a second e3 and you remember I-, I said something about that i think either off yeah. mic or on mic uh that people yeah. are taking this seriously now I-, yeah. I-, I mean i want the game wars to be serious and i think people now are actually going to start making games as a craft and not just a money seeking thing like they actually won awards because a lot of people were saying when they're holding their awards it's not plastic they're like oh man this is actually really heavy like yeah so yeah. Maybe we can maybe the brand the um stuff will branch out now to where we can get acting performances for best actress or I best can't believe voice that's actor. Not part of the show, it's crazy, dude. Yeah, or I, like best best like music. Yeah, in a yeah. game or things like that. Like yeah. I can't believe those aren't categories for these games. They, they should be. They, they should, should be. be. Yeah. Um. One more note about the music, though. I will say is um the 
the the the band they had playing before the game of the year announcement that was really fucking cool did you notice yeah. that where they were yeah. playing music from each game that was being shown yep, and yep, transitioning that was, between yeah, that them was really cool yeah that is a good use of music that's what they show. should do for a lot of their, their yes stuff so that's an amazing use of music in an award show i thought i thought that was like one of the coolest parts of the show so for me so, at least i saw someone post this and i, I know we're since we're on the award topics do you think actors and actresses, uh, voice actors and voice actresses, should get Oscar nominations for video game performances? I saw this post on the Reddit, and there was a little bit of on, on both sides. Like people the were like, "Yeah," is, and no. The thing is about it is that we've already answered the question because we created our own award show with video games specifically. If we wanted them to be taken in that light. Like, we probably should have pushed those shows to include voice actors in, like, for video games in those award shows. It's just, it's something that's not going to happen. And should it happen? I I don't know. I mean, uh, there's been some seriously amazing voice acting performances that I've heard in games in the, in, in the, because, particularly in the last five years or so. But, because honestly, you're, you're one can argue too that it's not just voice acting; it's actual acting because they put on suits and they right. move and stuff they like move that. And... So, do the do the Oscars include both TV and movies, or is it just movies? I think it's movies only. So that's I the think thing. the Emmys is TVs, for TVs. Yeah, Emmy is for the TV. I think the Emmys and Golden Globe. I want to say is yeah, for the Golden TV. Go- Golden Globe is also for TV. So that's the thing. I don't necessarily think they they will be ever be included in those because those those are segmented shows specific to the medium in yeah. question. So we're doing the same thing with video games, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I guess it's I think I think the thing is is people want to race to the finish line. They're trying they're trying to get gaming on the same level as movies and television in terms of the way they're perceived. And the way acting is perceived in those mediums versus video games, I think people want it to be at that level, and they're just kind of wish casting that. Yeah, you know? I, I think next year though they should definitely include voice acting in, uh, and music into the categories because right. it's, we it's, need to do that ourselves. Yeah, it's definitely you know? a steal that we get these great composers and these great act, actors and actresses, and they're not getting recognized for their work. Um, Dude, like God of War last year um, is oh yeah. Won. Um, dude, Last Tales of the, Us, you know. Yeah, Last of Us, Tales from the Borderlands. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That game's voice acting is fucking amazing. Like, it puts Borderlands 3 to shame, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's how good that, that game was, in particular, in terms of voice acting. So, there's been plenty like, of games that have had great performances. Not only that, but, like, best director. Because people have, someone has to direct these scenes, you know. Like, right, we need to take right. this as a, a very, if you want this, this medium to be serious, you need to take all considerations because because oscars have that you know right, other people right. have best director best produ- i don't know about best producer but, but but definitely best director i see that a lot uh sound design or you know which we have there was a sound design award oh there was okay. the thing is the problem with that is that does not necessarily encompass music in it and maybe it should yeah um and to me it 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 like they, there should be a specific award for music because they should have like a composer like yeah right yeah, video game soundtracks are something that I think is severely underestimated by a lot of people and how good they are now. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them are fully orchestrated, and it's nuts. Like, you know, I think about, like, Nier Automata or something like that or a lot of the Final Fantasy games. They're, yes. they're like, fully yep. or- or- orchestrated tracks, and even the ones that aren't, I mean, I think about, like, Fire Emblem. Like, dude, that head game has an amazing fucking soundtrack. Yeah. You know, it's something that I legitimately listen to when I'm not playing video games. Because, honestly, you know? right, um, if they had, like, a best... I don't know, soundtrack or best sound like game or whatever. And those for a specific song. I honestly think that Pokemon Gym Battle shit would have won. Because right, that, that shit that, is yeah, really good. That's a good that's a good one too, is that, that that's kind of what I'm talking about here is like, yes, like the best genre game in a genre, yeah, sure we we should have those, but like, yeah, celebrating these things in games that I feel like are not often talked about is is valuable for something like this to do, which yeah. is music, sound design, you know, voice acting like you're talking about. So, um, yeah, that's the kind of evolution I'd like to see for the show. But, um, you know, as I said, this isn't necessarily – these shows aren't for me. They're not my jam. But the fact that there's so many announcements in them now, I'm probably going to have to watch this every year yeah. going <laughs> forward. But, um, you know, it, it – 
yeah, I just like because the one that the one that really stuck out to me was uh, streamer. Was it streamer of the year? Where he, streamer where of the Shroud, year? Shroud one where he was like he was like streamer of the year. Shroud, congratulations! And then they just cut like they it did, was. It, they did esports gamer of the year, and they're like, uh, yeah. But they, no, they actually had a somebody come up and. Oh, he came out for that. for that one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, so yeah, and that's the other thing is like I don't think Shroud was present. Like he didn't even know he won. <laughs> I don't even think he knew what the game awards was. So it's like, yeah, there's still some work to do in terms of getting this exposed out there. So okay, well, uh, any other thoughts on the show, or can we go straight into the announcements? Oh, right, we can go straight to announcements. Uh, right. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. I do yeah, think, uh, you know, the best game of the year was accurate. I. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool. Uh, Sekiro won. Yes, man. And. I, I, um, the thing is, the Game Awards actually has done an interesting job with this over the years. Think about this. God of War won last year, and I think that was the best game last year by far. Uh, back in 2015, uh, Witcher 3 won that oh, year, really? too. Yes, and that was going up against uh, the Phantom Pain that year. Ooh. Right, and you know Jeff Keighley is a well-known Kojima fanboy, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a surprise to everybody that The Witcher Three won that game. Even though I don't even know how the voting works. Yes, I thought Death but, Stranding was definitely going to win. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and dude, to my surprise, every year it seems like the decisions because I think Persona might have won in 2017. Maybe Persona Five. So I can, it, I can definitely see that because that game was really good. There's year. been some really surprising choices with it, so I think they've done a good job of actually picking the game of the year uh, with this show. Um, they kind of go outside of the grain of what the mainstream kind of does, which is interesting. Yeah, and I know we're going harping on PlayStation fanboys, but before we go, on, I have to harp on the, the Nintendo fanboys. Guys, get over it. Smash didn't win. Okay, I'm sorry. Smash won fighting oh game God. of the year, which is a Whatever. huge, a huge leap forward because they, people are finally recognizing this game as a fighting game, which is the Smash community wanted. Yep. But to sit there and get mad that they did not win game of the year, people were up in arms on Twitter. People were up in arms that Nintendo didn't reveal another character. Like, I don't understand what you guys wanted. They're so spoiled. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. What the right? hell, dude? They've released like six characters since the game came out last year. Like, <laughs> yeah, fucking exactly. get over it. Banjo Kazooie's in the fucking game. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, man. Come on. Yeah, it, it was. Joker's it was... in the damn game. You get the Dragon Quest character. Like, I mean, they're 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 doing crazy stuff with that game. And to be honest, like, it's not game of the year. It's not. It's a great game, but it's, it's... just it it's still Smash Brothers. Nothing has core nothing in the core of that series has changed since it ever came out like mechanically it's better it's gotten better over time mechanically but and that's really important to a fighting game but the thing is the game is the same as it's always been it's still the same format the 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 characters have gotten different the rosters have gotten different they've gotten more robust but that's kind of the thing with smash right now is like where does nintendo even go with that franchise from here like there's nowhere to go it, it, is, I, they've exactly. done it, it, it I, the I game think, is a platform at this point i think that was very uh yeah like you said it was the fan base is very um i won't say unapologetic but uh very ungrateful for what right i feel like they're ungrateful not normally i don't go against the consumers on this one but i'm going against oh. the consumers on this one because that yeah that on twitter and it was getting a lot of retweets so a lot of people it had like 10 a couple of tweets i saw had like million like over a million impressions and a lot of people were feeling this way and it's just i was just dumbstruck by it. i'm like wow like are you guys serious they put every character ever character. been in smash in this fucking game and that's not enough for you guys like calm down they're releasing new dlc characters they announced this there's going to be a second season pass probably of characters like uh, like uh, what more do you want from them let's let sakurai fucking rest Okay, let it, the man rest, p- please. L- please, please, for the love of God, let the man take a break. Okay, you guys are gonna kill him. Smash Bros is fine. Okay, stop being <laughs> mad about it. All right, that one, like Montreal said, it one best fighting game. That's crazy that people even consider it a fighting game. Like five years ago, that was not that, a thing. Hell, like two years ago, people were like, "This is not a fighting game." But right. like, you're like, still having that dumb argument. Exactly. Like, Literally, you throw punches and you fight people. Like, it's a fighting game. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's move into the announcements, though. Um, so, um, I guess we'll go down the list here in order, I guess, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Does that work for you? All right, so yeah, Multi- Multi- Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 announced some DLC. Um, nothing nothing really fancy there. Uh, there was a lot of DLC announcements here. There was a Final Fantasy VII trailer. Um, Facebook announced a game called uh, Salam. Um, and then this was probably the biggest thing to come out of the show is uh, Phil Spencer came out and announced the official name for the new Xbox that's coming out next year in uh, November 2020. It is going to be called the Xbox Series X, and it looks like a brick. It's just a big black tower. It looks good, man. That it does look-, look good, but... I like the simplistic modern design of it. But how is that thing going to fit in my entertainment center? It's going to fit. You can make it fit. Explain explain that to me. It's I'm gonna not have that to put big. It, I'm going to have to put it on top. What are you talking about? It's too tall. No, it's the same height as the PlayStation. No, it's not. Did you see the video I sent you? Yeah, it's, man. It, it, they did a size comparison. It's not that tall. Dude, you, you didn't watch the video then because it, it's like literally three PlayStations on top of each other high. Or even four. Like, it, it's tall, dude. It's as tall as, like, it's like, it's as tall you as You talking about standing vertical? Yes. No. You're going to lay this thing on its side. I'm st- I'm sitting up vertical. Yeah, no, standing vertical. It was like this tall. It's not that tall, bro. That's what it was. That's the mock up they made. Oh my god, dude. it's not that tall. I think you're over exaggerating. It's not I'm that not tall. I'm not exaggerating at all. It's not that you tall. You couldn't be more wrong about this. It is it's not that tall. Man, go it's not. Me. Like I think the design is really cool. I mean, the design is cool, but what do you think it is? Like a little fucking square? Like it's like a mini PC? It's it's like a it's like a little. It is like a mini PC. It looks like a little mini box. No, it's not. It's not, man. It's a big boy. It's like this. It's like this. It's it's like squared. It's like a square that's really tall. Like (laughs) (sighs) I don't know, man. That's that's what it is. And I think I think that's going to be a challenge for a lot of people to get in their entertainment centers. (laughs) I mean, it's a bold know. design. It's more modern than things we've been getting from these companies recently. And honestly, it does look cool. I think it looks sexy, actually. I really like it. Um, I, will, I will say the memes that came out of this were fucking top-notch. Yes. Top-notch Xbox stuff. Xbox 6. <laughs> oh, my God. No, not even that. People, people. Uh, did you see some of the ones with people uh, superimposing the Xbox and it, as, like, uh, in place of other objects and stuff. Mm-mm. Like, there was, like, an Ultimate Strength competition guy that had, uh, he, he he was carrying the Xbox. <laughs> oh, <sex>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then there was the one, uh, people started rolling out the original Xbox memes where it was, like, on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> it was so big <laughs> that it was, like, taking up an aircraft carrier. It was, uh, so we were seeing some fun stuff around that. But um, what about the name? What do, what do you think about the name, Xbox I think the Series name X? fucking sucks. So... They did say that the, the, the console is going to be called Xbox. This specific model that they showed is the Xbox Series X. There I think be, it should have been called Xbox Infinity. There will be a different Xbox model with a different name. It'll be like Xbox, I don't know, Series Y or something like that. That's stupid. That is a different model. Yeah, and it is stupid, and I think it's really confusing. This feels like a Wii U situation. I, I that, that's why I'm so mad because I'm like did not, did no one not learn from the Wii U? This PlayStation has the error. best the, the best names for their games. You they know what? They made it easy. Yeah, PlayStation one, two, one, three, four, PlayStation baby. Two, three, four. Oh, yeah, PlayStation Five is coming out. PlayStation Five. Like that's it. That's all they need. I don't understand why they didn't just call this the Xbox Two. Just call it the Xbox Two. Yeah, just start start fresh. That's yes, what the whole point are, of the Xbox One was. They said they people, wanted to start fresh. People are going to be making fun of you that there obviously were two other Xboxes besides the Xbox One, so this should be the Xbox Four, but fuck it. You said Xbox One, just go to Xbox Two and be done with it from there and be like Sony and just do Xbox Three, Four, Five, Six. You know, yeah. like you don't have to overcomplicate this, and they've done that here, and it's going to come back and bite them in the ass. Yes, it is. I just don't. I don't think this is smart. Like this because is, will they make another model of this other shit? Right. Like I said, it's what's it going like to be X, called? Xbox, gonna, Series, Xbox X, Series Y, <laughs> dude. And and somebody posted something funny on Twitter, like um, you know. <laughs> oh my god yeah it was it was like some uh like so uh, in a year a random parent goes in to buy their kid an xbox series x and they're like hey i want that i want that uh xbox series x in the the or i want that xbox x and the the, the person's like oh you want the xbox one x 
or the Xbox Series X, the Xbox X, you know, whatever. And, and like, eventually, like, they're just like, fuck it, just give me a PlayStation 5, you know? It's like, yep. they can't, they can't yep. figure out which one they want because there's so many, it's Xbox X, 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 so much, so many X's. Like, how many X's do you need in the damn name? Like, you're going to confuse people. Like, this yeah, is a bad call. It's stupid. I, I hope... I hope to God that they change the name. I hope I, I just go I'm, with Scarlet. Fuck it. I don't know. Like th- that name did sound really badass. It does. Xbox it sounds Scarlet. Badass. You know. It did, like sure the name should have a meaning, but I mean, th- what is the meaning behind this? I don't. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess they're trying to go for. I don't even know. Like this is the Series X version, and then like you said, the Series Y version. But like that's stupid. Just either call it the Xbox Two, yep. or Xbox Infinity, or Xbox Scarlet. Or th- there's a million names for it, like a yeah. million names they could have came. You could have even just gone with Xbox. Yeah, that would have been better than this. Because the problem with this is you literally just released a console revision called Xbox One X. So the only difference between that and this is that there's the word series instead of one. Yeah, and then you I think mean, about it, right? They could have did the uh, what's the Xbox? What was the Xbox One S and the Xbox One uh, X. S? So they could have did the Xbox Two X and the Xbox Two S. Like they could have continued that continuation. Right. The naming I, I, scheme. Yeah, I, I really like PlayStation's design model behind their names. It's just one, two, three, four. Even the Switch and even Nintendo has this issue, right? Like, are they going to call the next Switch the Switch 2? Or are they going to call it something retarded? Or, I'm sorry, something crazy or whatever. The Wii or the Wii U. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they just... Uh, it's it, it's, it's it, not hard. It's really not hard, guys. It's not It's not that hard. You don't, you're overcomplicating this in a way that is unnecessary. Like... I think this is a really unforced error for, for, for Microsoft, in my opinion. They do a lot of; they've been doing a lot of things right too. I've been giving them a lot of credit, but this is one of those ones. This that's is like, a this is a really big uh, swing and a miss for me. It is, and I I I think honestly the console design <clears throat> I I don't know if it's going to work for people. You know, like it's the console be, design. I don't think the console design is the biggest issue. I think the console I mean, it's design. It's not a huge issue, but the thing is, is like it's going to be like the the switch dock where you're going to have to put that outside of your entertainment center because it's not going to fit so you're going to have two things potentially if you have a switch already that are outside of your entertainment center and it just it it, like i don't necessarily think that's aesthetically appealing to a lot of people and that i know that sounds stupid but that matters to people like the way your house looks kind of matters to people and particularly when you own a house um, you don't want your house to look dumb. You want it to look nice when people come over. So yeah, I understand. It's, it, it, and if you have a situation where your television is not mounted or something like that, and it's sitting directly on the the uh, entertainment center, you you might have to buy a separate table or something to put this thing on. You know, like next to it, and that that's not a good situation to be in. You know, so I think that's something that they didn't. They wanted to go bold here, but I don't know if they thought about it practically in that sense. So. For me, but I guess we'll see when it comes out. I mean, if people are going to care or not, they probably won't. But um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a minor quibble, I guess. I think the name is going to be a bigger issue for them than anything. Just getting that out there and really marketing that and making sure that people understand what this is versus the Xbox One X. You know. Yeah, that's so. maybe they. Just, I don't know, bro. Like this is really a really crazy name, Xbox Series X. I'm just like, what? Why not Xbox 2? Just Xbox 2 it up, man. Well, the other thing that's kind of questionable here is I understand their need to get out before Sony. They wanted to announce this before Sony announced the PS5, and I think they know that it's imminent with Sony. But why here? Because they got buried here, like, in my opinion. Like, there there was a lot of talk around this thing, but not nearly as, like, this. they were not the center of attention with this show. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? I just, I feel like this was a weird place to announce your console. In my opinion, like I think they're just I, I want to I'm hoping this is what it was. They wanted to get the general perception of the public and maybe when they come out with their own inside Xbox uh, mm. conference or whatever, they're like, OK, either we change the name because <laughs> I, I just think I changed that name. Yeah. There's no way they can continue. It. I'm sorry. I'm stuck on this name, y'all, but there's no way they can continue with that name. There, There's just no way they're not going to change it, dude. That that's that's just wild to me. That's wild. Like they need yeah. to change the name. Yeah, so I mean, I think announcing first is, it's fine. It, 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 I think it was predictable for them. Like it makes sense. I think they feel a need to kind of get out in front of Sony, 
Um, I don't think Sony feels any real urgency to do anything um, to kind of combat Microsoft because I think they feel like they're safe for the most part, which, I mean, they really are. But we'll see, I guess. I'm, I'm just – I think E3 is the moment for Microsoft this next year in 2020. Like, I think E3 is really where they're going to take their big swing. They have to take it there because – there's just not um, there's not much to excite you at the moment if you're on PlayStation. Like if you're a PlayStation player, there's not much reason to be excited about the Xbox Series X. You know, as a launch device, it's just not. Yeah. They yeah. haven't differentiated it in any way. I mean, I did see an argument on Twitter saying that you know the fact that they have Game Pass built in and that it will be fully backwards compatible is a really compelling initial salvo for them to have. That is going to be there by default when they launch this thing. Yeah. Whereas the PS5, you might not have anything, you know, if there's no backwards compatibility. So they feel a need that Sony does have to kind of punch back with that. But And it's a good point. Game Pass is very robust. There's a big library there. Um, and it's very it's cheap relative to, you know, well, how much stuff you're getting. But to me, like, they, st- I still think they need more than that, you know. Oh yeah, they definitely need a lot of more exclusives and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we'll talk about that when the PlayStation Five gets released. But I believe the place it would be very foolish for the PlayStation Five not to be backwards compatible with the PlayStation Two. Now, people want it to be compatible with the Three and Two. Um, well, I said PlayStation Two, PlayStation Four PlayStation rather. Four, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think it needs to be compatible with PlayStation Four. Um, but people want it to be compatible with the PlayStation Three and the PlayStation Two. That's a stretch because they already got PS now. I think yeah. that they're going to really push that. Unfortunately, you know, that mm-hmm. it would have been really cool if my PlayStation 3, 2 games could play on my PS5, but I just don't see Sony doing that, uh, wasting their time on that. And even with PS3 games, I don't see them really wasting their time on that. I don't think it's about backwards compatibility as much as it is that at least they bring back PlayStation Classics. Yeah. So that you can at least play buy the games on PSN and play them. Yeah. On the PlayStation 5. That needs to be a thing. Yeah, I agree. I don't necessarily need to be able to put my PS1 discs in and be able to play them, but at the very least allow me to buy some of those games. I agree. You know? I agree. Open uh, the vault up. Right, open the vault. So, All right, moving on. Um, Microsoft had another announcement related to Ninja Theory. They announced uh, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. So this is going to be a sequel to Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which was made by Ninja Theory uh, a few years ago. This is a pretty big announcement, actually, because that game is really, really, really well well liked. Yeah, um, it was a. Uh, I haven't played it, but I did watch a couple of let's plays of it, and mm-hmm. it does some things really, really well. Um, I need to play it myself. Yeah. Um, because I heard the game is really psychedelic in that in that aspect. Yeah, it's it, very psychological. Um, yeah. In terms of what happens in the main character in the storyline. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. and I I really want to play it because of that. Um, I do kind of look forward to the Microsoft haters, though, coming out of the woodwork and being like, oh, Hellblade sucked. It was a terrible game. Rah, 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 rah. Like, all this fucking <laughs> revisionist history comes out just because they're owned by Microsoft now. And everybody oh, fucking you know it's coming. Game. I can't wait yeah, for it You know to it's come. coming. Yeah, like, dude, when they when Ninja Theory was purchased by Microsoft, the, the level of butthurt that happened was, was fucking hilarious because people are like, oh, no, this sucks. They're going to ruin Ninja Theory. Oh, they're not going to let them do Hellblade too and it's like here we are uh, they're letting them do it so that's so, the thing right so uh when Sunya held uh hellblade one pretty much came out the first time um people were <laughs> people people who had this revisionist history right they're like oh man you know what i always like devil may cry and it's like <laughs> don't you sit there and say that shit <laughs> Like, don't you dare. You like, I like Devil May Cry, and I even yeah. said that. I said, I like Devil May Cry. It's just not the Devil May Cry. It shouldn't have been called Devil May Cry. It should have been called yeah. a different game. Yeah. Um. A lot of people said that. A lot of Devil May Cry fans said that. But everyone in their mama was like, oh, yeah, I actually like the, I actually like the Devil May Cry games. And then they started naming the other games. that I forgot the other game they came out with. Uh, It was the guy with the monkey. It was the monkey guy. And, uh... Ah oh, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember. Capcom? No, no, no. Uh, Ninja Theory. They made a game. Oh, uh, Monkey Guy. Yeah, it was, it was, I 
I can't remember the name of the game. It was an action uh, game, though. I don't know what it is. Um, but then they, before that, I think they came out with Heavenly Sword. And then the game that I love from them, which I didn't know they made, uh, which is Kung Fu Chaos, which I think is one of their best games. Because that oh, game was okay. fucking fun as shit. Never heard of it. Ah, oh, man, you got to play it. That game's fun. Well, two other games that uh, Revisionist History has always pissed me off about. I probably mentioned this on the podcast before, but uh, Zelda Wind Waker. Everybody hated that fucking game when it came oh, out. Oh, yeah. Fuck all y'all <laughs> who sit here and say that that game is one of the best Zeldas. You all can go suck a dick. I remember. I was there. You all hated it. I remember hated. on Game Facts. I remember on Game Facts. I was fucking there. You all hated it. You were like, this game cartoony as shit. I'm fucking, oh, it's so stupid. Oh, and, then, and then Twilight Princess came out, and they're like, yeah, oh. Yeah, you, you all loved it. Yeah. Y'all and now loved they don't, it all of a sudden. They don't even, not even talk about Twilight Princess anymore. And then Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I remember this one too. Revisionist history on this one. Everyone, everyone thinks it's cool to hate on this game now. All of a sudden, when I remember when it came out, Montreal does too. It wasn't that long ago. It was like two and a half years, two and a half years ago. Everybody was sucking this game's dick. Ten out of ten, best Zelda ever. This is the best game I've ever played. Now it's like it's it, it's it seems like it's like hip to hate on it. Ah, it was called Enslaved. That was the game. Oh, I, I was thinking of that game. Yeah. Okay, they did make that game. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, like. Breath of the Wild, though, like, man, like, get out of here. You are all hype hype men for this game. Every one of you. I don't believe it. If you tell me you didn't like Zelda, Breath of the Wild, I don't believe you. I didn't. I know I didn't. And I've never I've never gotten off that point, you know. But, but that you, you know, didn't like Breath of the Wild? Yeah, I didn't like it from the get-go. Uh, obviously, actually, as we heard earlier in the year, I kind of came around to it a little bit playing yeah, it again. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, I still think it has significant flaws, though, you know. Um, so... And I've never, I've never been, I've been consistent with that point. So get out of here. If you think Zelda sucks now, and you were one of those people who gave it a ten, you're the problem. Okay, you're part of the problem. All right, let's keep going here. Amplitude <laughs> um, <laughs> Studios. Um, basically, they had already announced this game, but they showed a trailer for Humankind, which is going to be their Civilization clone. Um, this is the first game to ever really try to ape the specific. Civilization, Sid Meier's Civilization formula. Okay. Where it's going to actually play throughout human history. Okay, cool. Um, I'm really excited about this game uh, because I really dislike Firaxis, and I th- I'm think it's going to be good for them to have some competition finally in this space because they've been free to do whatever the hell they want with Civ and for it a shows. long last time. And yeah. it does show. Yeah, they, they, they definitely, uh, the game is quality. The design is quality, but they, they just, there's little things that they ignore that ruin the fucking game, like the AI being shit, you know? Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's little. I think that's really big. I know. And they, they think it's cool, and they think it's okay to not make it better, you know, to not make it actually, like, high quality. It frustrates the shit out of me. So I'm happy that somebody's here to uh, kind of put it to them, as it were. So, um, moving on to the next announcement. This one was a face palm and a half. Uh, Bravery Default 2? Yes. How was that face palm? Face palm. This is how Kingdom Hearts naming conventions start, okay? There is a Bravely Default 2. It's called Bravely Second. Oh, really? Yes. I fucking hate Square Enix. Oh, you know what? I was thinking that when I watched this yes. trailer, and I'm like, isn't there a Bravely Default 2 already? There is. <laughs> it's all Bravely Second. It came out a few years ago. And here we are, Bravely Default 2. What are you doing, Square? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why you do this to people? Well, it's a new world, a new story, and all new heroes with a light away in the original RPG experience <sighs> from the Nintendo Switch in the 2020. The successor to the original Bravely Default. And they bought you Octopath Traveler. Oh my god. Dude, I can't wait till like a year and a half from now when they announce a prequel to this game called Bravely Default 1.8 or some fucking don't, shit. Don't, don't give them fucking <laughs> ideas. Three, two, <laughs> 325 over six don't, days don't, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> don't give them fucking ideas, please. <laughs> I hate Don't Square, do it. Square Enix. Can you just like get your shit together, please? Like enough with this stuff. Like this stuff is so stupid. You guys are just a meme. Ugh. All right, moving on. Uh, there was some Warframe DLC, uh, Magic the Gathering uh, Arena DLC. Uh, this one was interesting. Player Unknown announced the, his next game called Prologue. 
Oh yeah. And I, this looks like it. It looks it, like an actual survivor game. Right. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. It's interesting. You kind of that was out of the blue too. Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of touch on this real quick. Uh, that Warframe real quick. Okay. That Hyperion DLC. This is what I want Destiny to do. I want Destiny to do this shit. It's they, you know, because obviously Warframe, you, Warframe, you go from planet to planet, flying different ships or whatever, just for loading screens. But now they turn those loading screen ships into an actual game and you can fight in space with the ship that you fucking have. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Oh, it, that's so cool. it's a whole different game in space from the original Warframe game and it's free DLC. Destiny, get your fucking shit together. No, Why don't we have this? You gotta look at your purple ship for like three minutes. It's a loading screen. They turn your loading screen to an Come actual on. game. Come on, Watcher. You don't like your like orange and blue ship? Oh my god. This is Come on, man. Warframe is killing them. How do this game is really fucking good? I mean, Destiny 2's firing all cylinders, man. People like it again. Everybody but likes when I Destiny look at Warframe, again. When I look at Warframe, I Nobody cares. It's better. It's so much better than Destiny. I mean Oh my god. The masses, anyway. The masses don't agree with you. Destiny two is cool now, dude. It's good again. It's been good for like a year. Ever since Activision Unless let they them go. unless they include space. Ever since battles. Activision ever since Activision let them go, man. Destiny's good. The second Activision let them go, Destiny became good immediately, you know? You know? That's just how it works. Oh you take that Activision god. stink off the game and the loading screens are cool now. I guess, man. Ugh, so dumb. I'm just, I'm being contrarian. I'm I know, I know you're being contrarian, but <laughs> Jesus. I got you riled up, man. I got you Cause, riled up. Because, like, Warframe is better. I got to play Warframe. Like, how far into it did you get? I got really far, and I stopped playing okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Man, I kind of want to, I've always wanted to try it. It sounds really cool. Yeah, but... it is. It's really cool. It's a cool ninja shooter game. Like, you're a fucking space ninja. Cyborg space ninja. And they have, like, fucking... 50 different classes of space ninjas and it's fucking cool like it's cool as fuck and then they have an open area where you can travel uh like have an open world area and stuff like that because mo- it was mainly like kind of level based but now it's like open world almost and it's really cool oh, i wish i had more time i would play a game like warframe if i had more time just oh well it's never gonna happen <laughs> 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 Alright, let's keep going. Uh End Night Games announced something called Sons of the Forest. Um I don't even ever recollect it. Didn't really know what that game that all that impressive to me. It yeah. looked like it's supposed to be a scary game, but like I said, it didn't oh, look that wait, was this the one was this the one where it was like death versus life or whatever? It looks like it, yeah. I mean, they had the trailer. Where there's like the the statue that has that like red jewel in the head or whatever. And I don't think like, that. I, maybe I'm not sure. Is that, this is one that is, looks like a scary game. Oh no! Actually, I'm wrong. Yeah, this I one. I think I'm wrong. Yeah. I think I'm thinking of the wrong game. This one looks like a scary game. So. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, um, Riot announced uh, a new game called The Ruined King. Yes. Which is going to be a story based, turn based. I don't know if they said game? turn based. They said turn based. The, this one is a this one's a turn based role playing game, I think. Oh, it is. I think that was what this one was. There's a second one later that is different, but I'm okay. pretty sure one of these was a turn based strategy game or not strategy game, turn based role playing game. They said um, it's they say it's supposed to be into the dark side as well. It's gonna it's it's made by the guys who made um uh Night War um a few years ago which is an indie game that was a turn based uh, role playing game in the vein of like, ah, Final okay. Fantasy so okay. yeah which is interesting and they said you're going to be able to play with uh, characters champions from League of Legends proper yeah like so. cause, I mean I, I, you haven't heard my podcast before <laughs> Whoa, boy I got something to tell you I've always <laughs> wanted fucking League of Legends to do this shit because they have very interesting stories within their worlds that they never mm-hmm. they expand upon, but a lot of people don't know about. And I think the yeah. Rune King is a very interesting lore because it's like a weapon in the game or an item called Blade of the Rune King. And uh, the Rune King itself is a very interesting uh, lore behind it. So 
uh, boy, am I glad they're doing this. I am really glad they're expanding their world and they're trying to actually flesh it out. It's like boy, somebody, am I glad to see them doing this. Yeah, like someone's listening to the, my fucking podcast. And thank you, whoever that one writer just, is, is listening. Is like, yeah. yo, these guys are doing it. I just, I just wish that more companies would do this. You know, like Nintendo's dabbled with this with Mario in the past, but like... Do zany shit with your games, dude. Like, make a fucking JRPG with Mario, which they've done in the past. But like, make another one. Like, like fucking, dude. Like these things, dude. these IPs, these IPs fit into these genre frameworks dude. so well. It's ridiculous. I wish more companies would be, take these chances with their IPs. You know, Fuck Mario. <laughs> <laughs> you Fuck referencing Mario. a tweet that I liked. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like a few days ago. Yeah, I don't what? remember. Somebody, somebody tweeted something. It just said "Fuck Mario" in my timeline, and I was like, you know, you know this guy gets it. Like. <laughs> But uh, no, fuck Mario. Do F Zero, like do Captain Falcon yeah, in the action game, dude. In like a a, a, a a one of those side scrolling beat 'em ups, yeah, like, like cheesy you, beat 'em ups. Or you can make it like a fucking actual action game, like a or like fucking, Beautiful Joe side yeah, scroller, you know, yeah, like, like that. Yeah. Like, make us be a fucking bounty hunter, like he is, and his lore is he's a bounty hunter. So make get platinum games to develop a fucking oh, beat 'em up yeah. game and. Have Zero would be Falcon. cool. Yeah, F Zero would be really cool to expand upon. Because, dude, what is that universe even like? What are these races like? Why are these people racing the way they're racing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this shit's super dangerous. Like it's like this high speed hover and it's car. It's like, above cities and shit. Right, like, it's like could above die. cities. Like anybody could die. Like <laughs> just some random passerby gets fucking destroyed. You know, like what what is going on in this world? I don't know. Um, so yeah, no, I wish more companies would do stuff like this. And it's cool to see League doing this because, dude, I'll check this out. I'll yeah. check this out. If this is a good JR or good RPG, I will check this out. So yeah, man, um, I like this. This is cool, cool stuff. Um, they're they're doing interesting stuff. I mean, because they're bringing in a, a another dev. They're not doing this internally. Oh, this really? Is, yeah, okay. as I said, this is an indie dev who made their own game called Night War, like a, f- a couple of years ago. They came out. Okay, a I years thought ago. maybe they bought that studio or something, and they were just part of the, their team. Maybe they did, but even so, they they brought someone externally in to make yeah, this yeah. kind of game. So, um. Yeah, so it's good stuff. I think I think it's good to see from Riot. So, all right, let's keep going. Um, there's going to be a Dungeons & Dragons game called Dark Alliance coming in 2020. Hack and slash, baby. Hack, hack and slash. <laughs> hack and slash, baby. Hack and slash. <laughs> <laughs> Shake and bake. <laughs> all right. Um, Apex Legends had a holiday, has some holiday event going on uh, that they showed i off. actually like this, this it looked kind of cute but yeah, you know i actually like the it. little it mirage cool. skit that they did with jeff Keeley kind of went on a little bit too long in my opinion um <clears throat> uh ori and the will of the wisps is getting a march 2020 this game date. looks fucking phenomenal it really does it really really like does. the first one was okay like i'm not i wasn't really too impressed with ori and the blind force in the first one but really? this game looks fucking phenomenal i'm definitely going to check this out as soon as it drops yeah, like, no, it looks really cool. I hope it's on PC day and date because um, I, I don't want to have to play it on Xbox. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, thinking about it, never mind. I have an Xbox One. so what, what are we And then they they probably going to do a cross-release, like, you know, yeah. same day for PC as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then uh, finally, Sony's Sucker Punch uh, showed an extended Ghost of Tsushima trailer. Um, what did you think of this? All right. I just got to refresh my memory because I, I saw it. And there wasn't very much gameplay from what Yeah, I it was very it was, cinematic. It was a cinematic trailer. Um I didn't take much out of it personally. I wasn't super impressed, but um the game looks really cool, the concept looks really cool. But it's kind of like thrown a wrench in things for me because the character they showed is not doesn't seem to be the same guy that they showed in the E3 trailer from a couple years ago. Yeah, it looks like they went with the ninja route. Like it's not right, a samurai so has the, anymore. Has the game changed? Like, yes. is he a different character now? Because if looks that's like the it. case, I'm a little disappointed. I really wanted to play as a samurai. This looks like Sekiro more than. And that's why I'm kind of disappointed, like you said. Yeah, I don't. I, I wanted to play as know. a samurai. I didn't want to play as a ninja. There's not a lot of samurai games out there where you're right. actually dueling. I think Sekiro gets really close to that, but you're still a ninja in that game. You're still a shinobi. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
uh, that's probably as close as we're going to get, honestly, to being yeah. like a full So, I don't know. Game. I don't want to judge the game yet because this was a short, brief uh, trailer. So And like they say in the it's, bottom text, the game's subject to change. The game's it's, still in development. It's possible that they're going to have both characters in the game and you're going to get to play as both, but um, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I wasn't too impressed with the game. Because, yeah, if they're making, dude, if they're just making a Sekiro clone, like, yeah, <laughs> like, okay, good yeah. job, guys, great. Like, I'm not even going to be interested in the game if that's the case. So, um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully there's more, they show more uh, next year for it. So, uh, more in-depth d- gameplay as well. Yeah, because um, it looks like it's a cross between Sekiro and The Witcher 3. Yeah. Like, certain viewpoints, it looks like it's yes. Witcher 3. Because there's open world. Um, yeah. Running you're, around. You're, you're, like, riding your horse and shit like that, so. Uh, uh, we'll see, man. All right, next one. Uh, Oculus Quest is making a VR beat 'em up game called Path of, Path of the Warrior. I mean, this looked like really. I don't know. I don't know if I'd say it looks. So like it reminds me of a. Uh, I don't know if you ever played Streets of Rage, like on. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what it reminded me of. I, I actually thought it was cute because of that. Like I was like, oh, this is a cute little, you know, Streets of Rage Double Dragon type deal, and I think it's pretty cool. Like. This is a VR game I would buy if I had if I had a VR system. Yep. Like it looks really cool. It doesn't look like it's a uh, it's bringing that stylized approach to it. I like how it looks, man. It's li- it's it's like legit. That's really mm-hmm. cool. It looks really yeah. cool. This is the first VR game I'm actually really impressed by. Um and then uh a tactical FBS called 9 to 5 was announced. Uh whatever. Didn't look any Thing particularly interesting. We want to um, take you back to the roots of Counter Strike. I, I yeah, oh, whatever. You know, it's, it's so you, you guys ever play Rainbow Six? Well, Dude. we're going to take it back because we want to get so, those roots it was back. So buzzwordy. I just whatever. Um, and then Amazon Game Studios officially announced New World, which is their uh, MMO that's going to be taking place in colonial times. Um, this was the one that I was thinking of with the the statue. That had the the room. I had the red whatever. eyes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this shit looked weird. Um, I was. I'm actually glad it's not like. I'm glad it's like fantasy colonial, not just like regular. Oh, you yeah. know, hunky do. <laughs> I can't even do their accents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a I'm a pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Hello there, fe- fellow Native American. <laughs> Hello there, British soldier. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking, what do you think is going on in the colonial times? Montreal? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't fucking <laughs> For the queen? I don't know. Fucking <laughs> For the queen. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> America, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to get our independence. <laughs> America, nah. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think this looks pretty cool, though. Uh, yeah. From the from the trailer they show, I'm I'm glad that it's uh, taking a spin on a new world and mm. you know turning on turns on his head because I I never really was a fan of that particular era of time because any video game that came out, I think Fable Three tried to make their design around that, even though it wasn't obviously it wasn't like a. Yep. The new world, but they had their the mm-hmm. characters in that time frame, and I didn't really like the character design. Like the armor you got was trash because it was like colonial clothes. I'm like, this shit looks <laughs> ass. Like I got <laughs> Oh my god! What are you talking about? Those outfits are awesome, man. No, um, they're not. I don't want to so wear cool. the fucking red coat and some like yeah, man. That some panty loons. Like, like get the fuck out of here, yo. <laughs> panty loons. <laughs> yes. What are you talking about? <laughs> Look fucking ridiculous, bro. I hate I hate that. That is the worst fashion era. I would rather have some clunky ass armor. You like don't the, like the, the, the fake hair, the wigs everybody wore. Oh, all the it was wore. terrible. Yeah. Like what were they thinking? You have about? to wear like gray gray <laughs> hair wigs. Like that you you look real hot right now, dude. Like Yeah. Oh no, I with, bet you with, like, with like with like uh, cur- curled uh, what are those things that women put in their hair? <laughs> fucking curl their hair. I don't know what the curlers or <laughs> and whatever. They had, the, like, had a tight ass corset dress that's probably <laughs> Destroyed just, women. Just, just destroyed imagine. Destroyed their rib cages. Like. Oh my god. Just imagine getting hot and heavy with a woman, right? And you have to go through like five hours of taking their dress <laughs> off. Like <laughs> Imagine imagine taking off a bra with and, and multiply that by thirty five. <laughs> that's what you have to do. 
<laughs> like oh, I never man. liked this area of like this period of time because it was the the dressing was ridiculous. Like, I just love it. I think it's so silly and ridiculous looking. <laughs> so it's great. It's a great time period. I love colonial times, dude. It's awesome. Man. Oh my god, that's um, literally the worst time ever. I don't see how anybody could live like like that time. But man, hey, you know what? Look, all right, we're getting sidetracked. We, yeah, we, we'll, are, we we'll, are. We are. We'll have a we'll have a reflections episode about that time period at some point. <laughs> Because I disagree with you harder than I've ever disagreed with you. <laughs> so, all right. Let's keep going. Um, the uh, Dishonored and Prey uh, X um, developers announced a game called uh, Weird West. That It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it looked interesting. Um, the uh, isometric game. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks like an isometric kind of MMO-ish style game, yeah, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, and then Riot came out and announced their second game uh, called Convergence. Um, it's a story. It looks like a story-driven game of some sort. Um, looks like a side-scrolling game. It looks yeah. like it's going to be a side-scrolling game. Okay. Um, and uh, it's taking place with one of my characters I used to play a lot, uh, Echo. And uh, it's about his story in um, a, a city called Zion that uses something called Hex Tech con- Technology. Which is almost like futuristic. It's still magic technically, but they use it in a futuristic way where the city looks like it's a modern city, like mm-hmm. in our time, using like electricity. Yeah. Instead of using electricity, though, they use hex tech technology and things of that nature. So they build mechs and things of that nature out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty good. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, and then uh, the last big reveal was uh, Warner Bros. announcing The Wolf Among Us two officially. Um, so it looks like some X telltale devs are working on this, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how excited you should get about this, bro. But. You're wrong. The the last and final announcement, which is the biggest announcement of the decade. I under, I don't understand how you could not be hyped for this. Look, I didn't, I'm not done. I wasn't done. Are you not done? Okay. Oh no. I'm going to talk about Vin Diesel. <laughs> did you, did you like his appearance? Oh man, it was the best. What a badass. <laughs> I fucking love Vin Diesel, man. <laughs> I love Vin Diesel, and 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 he is a gamer. He is like, he legitimately. Is. He's a legit he, gamer. He has his own game studio. Yeah, he made the Chronicles of Riddick games. <laughs> you know, those games are actually pretty good. <laughs> those games are pretty good, from what I understand. So, I mean, he's legit. He's legit, like dude. Um, but yeah, the crowd went crazy when he came out. Because um, we thought we were getting a Chronicles of Riddick game, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Sadly, <laughs> it's a Fast and Furious game. <laughs> no one asked for this. Uh, but, you know, the crowd was still excited regardless. So, you know, I guess yeah, good, you can take good that from away. showing some love to us. But I did. Epic, Epic Games had the audacity to come out and announce a fucking holiday sale in the middle of the Game Awards. You know how Epic Games do, man. That's like, what they do, man. Go away. <laughs> go away. <laughs> Whatever. You know. You don't see Valve doing that shit. Bro, we already established that Valve gives no fucks. About it. Sh- <laughs> they don't do shit anyway. Yeah, they're like whatever. <laughs> oh, people buy our games. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. We have to spend. We have to give the government taxes. We're losing our customers to Epic. Please let them go. I- I'm yeah. done with this. Yeah. All right. We got a lot more to get through here, so we got to keep trucking along here. So next story: uh, Twitch has joined the. Streaming wars officially now and assign their own exclusivity deals with three streamers. Uh, these are big ones too: Lyric, Tim the Tatman, and Doctor Lupo. I have not heard of any one of these people. Really? Nah. Man, okay. They're they're in that like uh, Ma- Lyric. I have. I'm sorry, Lyric. Okay, I have. Lyric, the other yeah, two. Lyric's huge, dude. Yeah, uh, I Doctor heard Lupo and Tim the Tatman are kind of in that like. Doctor Disrespect, Shroud, uh, okay. Ninja kind of sphere. They play uh, a lot of gotcha. shooters and stuff. Gotcha. Um, so uh, Doctor Lupo got really popular uh, playing with Ninja uh, over the last couple of years. So um, it's not really about who they sign though per se. It's really the fact that they are signing exclusive deals themselves now. It it seems like we are in the midst of a streaming war, basically, uh, game streamer war. <laughs> Where these two companies, Mixer and Twitch, are just gonna start going at each other's throats, it seems like. Yeah, that's that's so weird too. Because I, I put up a post and everyone kind of ignored my tweet. <laughs> I, I feel sad when people ignore my tweets sometimes. I mean, that's about ninety five percent of your tweets. So. Oh no, like some of them don't get any action because I don't want them to. But okay. it was it was this one I wanted to get action on it. Um, 
And it, it was saying, like, how long do you think streaming as a, a con- as a serious media is gonna is it gonna last? Do you think it's gonna be? Do you think it's here to stay, or do you think it's gonna be? Oh, just, yeah. It's just a phase. Nope, I think it's here to stay. You think it's here to stay? Yeah. Why? Why would it go? Like, what reason would it? Like, why, why? Like, people are into this, dude. These people are personalities. Like, this is like a show. They put on a show. Like, it's it's like the okay, okay. And, and when you think about somebody in particular, like Doctor Disrespect, like he he's he. I have a severe respect for him because dude, the level of his streams compared to everyone else is like it's not even close. Like he legitimately has extremely good production value and actually plays a character and it's like it's like a <laughs> yeah, he does. I mean it, it's it's just on a different level from the rest of what game streaming is doing, you know. Yeah, he, yeah. He's so I kind of hope he's raising the bar and kind of showing what people want out of streams. Um but I think in general, these other streamers, though, that are just kind of personality streamers or they're really good at games and people watch them because of that. Yeah. I, I think, I think another are, person I don't think that, people are going anywhere. I think another person that rivals Dr. Disrespect is Tyler One. Like, he's fucking obnoxious. And he cannot yeah. be like that in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, dude, Dr. Disrespect was on uh, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, like, last week. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He did, like, a, they did, like, a skit with him. Um, or something. So this is, it's not a, I, I think it's here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, but it is interesting that Twitch is doing this. I mean, they're they're committing money to this now. And honestly, congrats to these guys because, dude, they're fucking made now. Like, I mean, these are million-dollar deals. Yeah, like, man. They're, they're making money, you know? Like, this is crazy how, how much this has escalated in the past few months. Like, Microsoft did this, too. This is all Microsoft. <laughs> When they took Ninja, dude, it was all bets were off at that point. So, all right, next story, uh, moving on. Uh, so, a uh, 2K basically released a statement saying that a new Bioshock game is in development uh, last week. And this was kind of weird. It kind of came out of nowhere, and they said that the game is several years away. And it's going to be made by the <laughs> Civilization Studio, Firaxis. Which is a weird choice because they make turn-based strategy games for the most part. They don't really oh, make God. action games. So, actually, I can see a turn-based strategy game in the Bioshock universe. But they're not making a turn-based strategy Bioshock. They're making a real Bioshock game, like a shooter. So uh, it's a weird choice, and I don't know what their need was to announce this. <laughs> they're pretty much like, "Hey guys, we still make single-player games too." They probably, they probably it's looking be canceled at canceled at any moment. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just it felt like a weird announcement to me. I mean, a lot of people are excited, obviously, but what is a what does a Bioshock game even look like without Ken Levine? You know, I guess it's Bioshock too, but you know that that people don't like that game very much. So yeah, the story, you know. the narrative of that game was pretty weird. Plus, where do you even go after Infinite? You know, like bro, we got in space now. We are. Already, I guess that's we're like in the that, sky. Well, legitimately though. That is that is like the next logical place, right? Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, they make a base on the moon or something like that. And yeah, maybe they somebody, made a city or on the moon. yeah, like a colony that that r- r- rotates around the Earth, like you know. Ah, yeah, that something. would be pretty cool. Yeah, look I, at I you. Mean, see, we already got it. We figured it out right there. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I guess it would be interesting. I guess. Um, it would be interesting to see though um, Bioshock's world kind of outside of the the uh, utopias <laughs> that we've seen. Yeah, I want to see how the regular world looks right, with all these inventions. Right. Maybe they got. And what do over. they think? What do they think of these places? Or yeah, yeah. like like since these uh, utopias are having like different powers, like how did it affect the the world wars and stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? So or economically. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would be pretty cool to look at. All right, moving on. Uh, next story. This one. So uh, I teased this earlier in the show. So this game apparently had already been announced, but uh, a game called Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is going to be coming in 2020, and a new trailer was dropped by the developer Psy Games. So this game was being developed by Platinum Games up until uh, early last year, and they took Platinum off the game and made the game's development fully internal in Psy Games. And Psy Games, for those of you who don't know, is a mobile develop- devel- developer. They make uh, a gotcha game called Grand Blue Fantasy. It's one of the most popular ones out there, actually. And um, it's interesting that they're making this game because it is a PS4 exclusive, and it is a uh, action game, and it looks like a Monster Hunter game. 
that is going to be co-op, but it's going to let you play by yourself with three AI partners. Um, and I don't know if this is going to be a story-driven game that actually has a storyline, if it's going to be open world, what the case is. The gameplay was really centered on the fight against the monster, but it looked like a really anime version of uh, Monster Hunter, basically. A lot faster and um, a lot flashier than Monster Hunter. Yeah, uh, I remember seeing this game on not last year's E3, but the E3 before that. They released it, or maybe it was the Tokyo Game Show. Um, I just... That was news to me that um, Platinum like got dropped by this because when I saw the gameplay initially, it did it was very action packed and everything of that mm-hmm. nature. But it was still it looks like a it looked like a Japanese RPG. Um, it looks like and it looked like your timing and your placement mattered within that. Yeah. This one looks more like like you said Monster Hunter ish, and I'm kind of turned off by that because when I initially saw it, they were in the dungeon and you had a tank and you had a mage and you can switch between the tank and the mage uh, and the archer and things of that nature. The player could switch between all four of the characters that are on the field. So I think this is probably where Platinum left because they probably wanted to go to a different direction and make it multiplayer and yeah. Platinum probably wanted to keep it a single player game because Platinum has really good experience with single player games. You know, it's interesting though. Like watching, looking at the trailer, I mean, there is a, there seems to be a pretty significant exploration element to this game. So it's not just fighting monsters. Like they're running around an environment here, trying to find chests and. Yeah, like the the first game or the first gameplay footage they showed, it was them fighting like a human, a I mean human characters. They were fighting like a knight or something like that. Yeah, which that that seems like it hasn't gone away. But there's just like a the centerpiece of this trailer is like a, a fight against a giant dragon. Um, I don't know, dude. Like this really, this really caught my attention when I saw this the other yeah, day. Yeah, when I saw it, um, you know, the year before last, I was like, man, this game looks really good. I, I really want to play this game, especially when I saw it was developed by Platinum. It was an action R. They classified it as an action RPG game, and it looked like, um, it looked like Tales, but it looked like Tales without you know going to the battle screen. Like it was just like, yeah, yeah. you know, you're playing a game in an adventure field, almost like Kingdom Hearts ish. Mixed with uh, what's another game that does that? Uh, oh, Dragon Age Inquisition, like how you mm-hmm. don't go into a battle screen, you just fight right there in the field, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, 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 I like the look of it, and I'm hoping this game keeps that aspect of it. I hope they didn't sacrifice a lot for this, the multiplayer aspect of it, even though it is cool that you can play with four of the people. I think that's really cool. Um, mm-hmm. but I hope they didn't sacrifice a lot for that, though. I mean, dude, it looks like that you can target body parts just like Monster Hunter um, in this, too. And I, I don't know, man. I, I, like, the thing is, side games, uh, they're interesting because uh, in terms of from my memory of being in the gacha community for uh, the year and a half I was in there, um, they are actually looked upon very favorably with that community. Um, a lot okay. of these developers are looked at as, like, really greedy and snake-like and don't make good games, but Side Games actually has a really good reputation among that community. Oh, really? Okay. So, I didn't know that. Seeing them make an actual console game, I need to look this up, too. Um, maybe we'll update this next week on, you know, if I can find any info. Like, have they ever made console games, like console-quality games in the past? I don't know for sure, so... Um, I would like to know that, and if so, like if this is their first foray in a console, I I I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. Like I don't I don't they, they seem like, they seem very capable because they've made it they made a gotcha called Dragalia Lost for Nintendo. Um, ah, okay. That came out. Uh, it's been over a year now. Since yeah, it came yeah. Out. And that was really well received as well. People really like that game um, on mobile, so they have a good rep. So we'll see if they can pull this off honestly but all right let's move on uh final story of the day uh, in terms of news stories um so <laughs> this is a call of duty story that was just such a face palm situation so apparently in the newest call of duty modern warfare you cannot see your deaths in the middle of a uh random multiplayer match you can see your kills and your assists but you cannot see your deaths so uh what does activision do well they released a cosmetic pack that includes an item uh this costs twenty dollars for this pack that includes about 10 items and then includes one of these items is a watch that your character can wear that shows your kill death ratio on the watch so it shows you the number of deaths you have this is the only way in the game currently to see your deaths during a match you can't see your deaths and no one else can see your deaths during a match 
they can only see it at the end of the match. So say, for instance, you're having a bad game, but you're not sure how many deaths you have, and you might change your behavior based on that number. Um, you don't actually know. So you can't see that without buying this cosmetic. And this just seems like a really predatory like situation here. Like Montreal said before the podcast when we were talking about this, is like, what? Like, what are you doing? You've released a Call of Duty that people actually like for the first time in a while. And you do this with it, like, come on, Activision. Like, what what are you doing, you know? Um, and this was one of those games, too, that released without microtransactions and then comes out with microtransactions a month and a half after launch, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah. They do, they do this again, you know? It's like, it's the same song and dance with them. They do it so they can avoid the review situ- the, the reviews from having a negative reaction to having market transactions in the game. And then they add them later when nobody cares anymore. You know, they do this. They've been doing this like for years now and it's getting real predatory and really, really sketchy in my opinion. And this in particular is like, like, what are you doing? You're monetizing people's kill death ratio. Like what, what, what will you do next? Is there no low that you won't steep to to make money? (laughs) You gotta have money to see. You gotta have DLC to see your, uh, your ammo count. (laughs) <laughs> and this is this That's is what all, it feels like. this is just as bad as when uh Konami monetized save slots in Metal Gear Survive. Me- yeah, to, uh, survive. And yep. that's that's crazy. You yep. monetizing save slots? That's really that's crazy. Ridiculous, dude. In a single player game in that game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is I mean this is bullshit. 20 bucks. Come on, guys. Like what are we doing here? You know. And People will defend it. People will buy it. <sighs> It's just, I don't know. Same I need to see again. my kill death ratio, bro, so I can be good at get on esports, bro. I mean, the ultimate, the ultimate thing about this is just that they're the same company they've always been. So nothing, nothing new, nothing new there. You know, nothing new there. All right, moving on. Uh, so we had some game announcements, DLC announcement announcements happening. Happening. The Dead Cells developer Motion Twin and Evil Empire have announced that there will be new DLC coming to Dead Cells in 2020. Um, and it's going to have a new ecosystem in it. And I mean, these guys have not stopped releasing DLC for this game. This game came out last year and, um, it was, uh, I played it earlier this year. It's actually, I think it's a really good game. Um, I liked it a lot, but the fact that they continue to support this game with, with DLC is, uh, uh, credit to them, I suppose. Cause it, it's not, um, I don't know if this is, I don't know if it's paid, yeah, I know. I think it is paid. Yeah, it's going to cost five bucks. But, I mean, dude, five bucks for DLC is pretty good. A price, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, good on these guys. I think pe- people really like this game. This game is very popular. It was very successful last year. So, um, for good reason. It's a really good game. Um, all right, next story. Um, this one, uh, this one's interesting. Uh, Bayonetta and Vanquish will be coming as remasters in 2020 to PS4 and Xbox One as a single game on February 18th. Um, it'll be a double pack in one disc for both of these games. Uh, Vanquish is Vanquish and Bayonetta are both PS3, Xbox 360 games that came out last generation. Um, and uh, Bayonetta One, um, I've only played briefly. I played about I don't know five hours of it. Um, I thought it was pretty good, but it didn't hold my attention. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a little tough to get into. Honestly. It was Bayonetta two did that for me. It, it, I beat Bayonetta yeah. one, okay. um, but Bayonetta two did. Uh, it was more of the same, in my opinion. Yeah. So when I played it, it was just, it didn't hold my attention. But the, uh, the Vanquish, score stuff, the score stuff in that game, yeah, really turned me off. Like, oh yeah, that's why you counters. hate being you hate being scored on that yeah, stuff. I don't like that. I don't mind it because it's not really a huge component of the game, but I can understand yeah. why someone can have a, a, I don't like a being certain graded. anxiety towards it. Yeah, I don't like being graded by a game I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like like the game tells you, "Oh, you got a fucking F in this <laughs> combat encounter. Like, like you sucked." <laughs> like it's like come I on. I like Devil May Cry's way because even if you yeah. do get like a D, right? It's like dismal. Uh, like <laughs> super cool. Like if you get a C, it's like crazy. Yeah, and if you get like an A, it's like awesome. And if you get yeah. like an S, it's like super smoking sexy. Like if you get a triple X. <laughs> so I, I I do like that. Like they should have did something like that with uh, Bayonetta. But um, yeah, Vanquish. I think 
everyone should play this fucking game. I want to. This I never played fucking it. Fucking cool. All I've ever heard about this game is how it's like one of the best shooters that's ever come out. It's okay for the time, but it's fucking <laughs> cool. It's like wild and zany. It's a wild zany, you know, kind of mech type shooter. You got you got a, your guy has a mech suit, but not like a like not like a mobile suit Gundam, but like uh Yeah, there's like, a lot of sliding and stuff you can do. Oh yeah, it. it's fucking yeah. it's fucking cool. Like they should have made a part two to this game. I don't know why. Hope this game sell hope the remaster sell really well and like, hey, mm-hmm. give us part two of Vanquish, please. Yeah. 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 I I might try to check it out. But the thing is it's all these games keep getting announced for like February, January, fucking March. Yeah, I know. Like, I already stop know. it, guys. I know. Are you fucking kidding me? Why are you releasing this game in February? Do it in the summer. Nothing's coming out in the summer. I think that's the, the end of the quarters or something like that. You're going to get fucking buried. You're going to get buried. You're not going to compete against like Cyberpunk and fucking Final Fantasy VII Remake. Like, just get out of here, you know? All right. Uh, speaking of another thing, another DLC that was announced for January, Kingdom Hearts Three Remind is going to be coming on January twenty third, twenty twenty as well. And there was a trailer associated with this, and you know, did it get you going? Are you excited? Are you going to play through Kingdom Hearts Three again to experience this? Montreal's rolling his eyes, guys. His eyes are rolling back into his head. It's. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be okay. Listen, I just don't know. I yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> is your face tired? Yeah, my face is tired. <laughs> like the like the Mass Effect meme. Like um, uh, keep bro, serious. I just I, we I. This is how much you wanna know how much I hate this game, y'all. Like I have a group chat name Redacted Three. They need not be mentioned in this mm-hmm. group chat anymore. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how much we all hate this game. This game sucks. And I think this DLC is just going to piss me off more. So I'm going to watch it on YouTube, I think. And bro, I, you think this this I'm is gonna why I'm going to marvel, I'm going to marvel what they what they had, they had the audacity to call, to charge <laughs> 40 fucking dollars for in this stupid DLC. It looks like you can play as different characters. Like you get some different characters you can play as, but I don't know. That's that's probably only 5 minutes of gameplay. Five extra minutes like a in there. single boss fight for each character. Yes, yeah. that's what I think it is. Honestly, I honestly think that's exactly what it is. Just... They added a single boss fight, or maybe two, but I don't think you can play any dungeons. I don't think you can switch between characters. I don't think it's going to be like mind blowing stuff. Like I don't think it's going to be like, oh, you can play as Aqua when she's in a dark world. Like the things that she had to go through, or see mm-hmm. Riku and Mickey when they're in a dark world. The things they had to go through, like. No. It's not gonna be any of that. They're gonna what? add a few scenes here, add a few scenes there. They're gonna give Roxas and Shion some more shine. People They're gonna let you play as Roxas. Had the fucking goal, the fucking goal to say, "Oh man, I don't think nothing's wrong with the story in this in this game." Or I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Are you? I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole again." But are you fucking kidding me? Like when they released this, people were like, "I don't." Uh, it's going to expand upon the story. I'm like, what story? What this story? This is Final Fantasy 15 all over again, dude. They it's... released an incomplete bad game, and they're gonna they're gonna fix it with DLC. They and can't. They if, they're they... gonna charge all you money for it, and you're gonna eat it up. You're gonna eat it. Fucking eat it up. They, they... Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Those of you out there who are thinking this, don't you dare fucking compare this to Monster Hunter, okay? Monster Hunter World Iceborne is a forty dollar expansion that is bigger than most video games. Period. Oh my god, it's not even crazy. It's not even. So this is not even remotely the just, same fucking thing. They okay, just upgrade the 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 weapon system in there. You can don't do you, more stuff. Don't you even think Free. about that. Don't Free. even let that thought cross your mind. This is not even remotely the same. This is a company releasing a crap game, and then deciding to just, quote unquote fix it by charging everybody forty dollars for those fixes. Okay, no, it's it's the remind man. What are you talking about? It's not fixed. No, it's They're bullshit. adding scenes, man. What are you talking about? What I'm are gonna you, watch this. What are you talking about? They're, I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna watch this, and and, and I'm probably gonna get my thoughts on. The stuff that they it. announced doesn't sound really appealing, right? Like, oh, you can modes take modes and yeah, yeah, photo you can, mode and you can take off the yeah the the easy mode pretty much thing, or you can take off show the, mode. <laughs> yeah, the slideshow mode and oh man, you you can download uh or not download but you know more poses for your characters when you guys <laughs> taking pictures and it's like yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking when I played this game. Yep. You know what this game is missing, Justin? 
I want to pose more with a fucking downloading Goofy. You know, I, you know what I want to do, Montreal? I what? want to pose Roxas on a skateboard with Axel <laughs> on rollerblades and, you know, watch him, you know, set him up like he's grinding on a rail or something in, like, Twilight Town. That's what I want to do and take some pictures, you know? Like, this is ridiculous. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. You know? Oh, my God. They're we'll recreate gonna... the scene where Shion, uh, Roxas, and Axel are on the uh, the tower in Twilight Town eating the ice cream. Yeah. You know, the sea salt. Sea salt ice cream or whatever. That's what I want to do in Kingdom Hearts 3. That's definitely what I wanted to do. Listen to this. Remind another tale that unfolds during the climax of Kingdom Hearts 3. Determined to rescue Kyrie, Sora travels to the Keyblade graveyard a short time before the final battle was was to take place. Lacking a corporal form, he traces the hearts of the seven guardians of light through Wait. experience of... Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Experiencing their personal battles firsthand, Sora is about to discover the truths he never imagined before. They're really, they're really about to explain the indie, the the fucking indie oh, that I we fucking, all fucking hate. I they're fucking they're can't. doing this shit. I fucking can't with these guys. What the fuck? Like they're literally gonna insert a five-hour segment of a fucking gameplay right before the final fucking battle. What are you talking about? Oh, and then it says, uh, this is another thing. <laughs> Additionally, the trailer also brings back some notable Final Fantasy characters from Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, yeah, from Kingdom Hearts 3. What do you mean from Kingdom Hearts 3? Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Additionally, the trailer also brings back some notable missing Final Fantasy characters from Kingdom Hearts 3, like Leon, Yuffie, and Aerith. It may even hint at some lingering threads at the end of uh, th- Kingdom you Hearts 3. Final Fantasy ending. characters? 40 bucks, baby! <laughs> Give me the money. I, and then I saw somebody say, right, which I don't agree with, and I think I think I think you're on the fence with it. I still think Kingdom Hearts needs Final Fantasy characters. Like I do. I'm sorry. No, I still did, think- no. We we didn't we say we said during the review they need to get rid of Disney and just go oh, all in. That's what it was. On Square Enix. On okay, Square Enix I was IP. seeing people say that. They need to get rid of the Final Fantasy characters. Like, my timeline was full. Of, like, these are yeah. Kingdom Hearts fans. And they're like, yeah, they need to get rid of They don't they even need the Final the Fantasy. opposite direction, man. Yeah, and I'm like, what are you talking about? But anyway. Square Enix would have control if there were no Disney characters in the game. They would have control. They'd be able to do whatever they want. They'd be able to tell the stories they want. They wouldn't be neutered. They wouldn't have to fucking, they wouldn't have to make worlds to promote Disney movies. They wouldn't have to do any of that. <sighs> and it just mm. it just looks like I, I see no mention here of like gameplay updates my god you know we kind of updated the combat but <laughs> real, I, I just don't I don't see that and that's just really uh, bugging me right now I, I, I really think they just kept the floaty shit like mm-hmm. <laughs> the floaty shit, yeah. I, I think they did. They didn't. Uh, they didn't add any flinching to the bosses. Like I really think they just added some cutscenes and was like, call it a day. Now, even if they do that right, mm-hmm. I will pay forty dollars for this if they redesign the whole fucking Frozen area. If they were just like forty dollars for redesigning Frozen, I'm buying that shit because that's how bad that fucking world was. <laughs> the world was so bad. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's I will buy worst. a separate game to play, <laughs> replay that shit. Why did I put this in the news? Why did I put this here? I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I've dragged us into this hellscape. I apologize so much. I'm just. I'm gonna drag us out. All right, my All right, yeah, we're I'm done. done. We're done. We're done. We're I'm done. closing the we're window. Done. We're, done. we're not talking about we're Kingdom Hearts three anymore. I'm so sorry, All right, buddy. Yeah. So I'm Final sorry. Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, Final right? Fantasy Crystal, Crystal Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> has been delayed to summer 2020. Square Enix is hitting on all cylinders, baby. That's like a, they, that's a good time to release they, that game. They had to they had to move this game out of Kingdom Hearts 3 D- DLC window, right? Because this was coming out. In Not January. only that, but Final Fantasy 7. Right. They had to they had to get it out of there. They needed to get yeah, it out man. of there. They, yeah. they got to put Kingdom Hearts 3 front and center, right? Yep. So, yep. Yep. You know, so this game's gonna be coming out in the summer. God knows why, but this is I, I don't that's know. A, it's a good summer game. It's this, a good summer this, game. This game though had online functionality, right? Are they? Yes. They're they're that's part of the remaster, right? They're gonna be like yeah, re-enabling yeah. the online functionality yeah, with this yeah, game. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. All right, well, let's keep going. We got like a couple more stories here. Uh, moving on. Uh, so, uh, Obsidian has announced that Outer Worlds is going to be having some story DLC released in 2020. Simple as that. There's nothing really specific about it, but um, damn, we still haven't played the game. <laughs> yeah, well, they're going to be supporting the game. So I, I hate it when companies do this because this makes me not want to play their game now because I'm like, <laughs> I just want to wait till all the DLCs out. And, yeah, you know, exactly. Get the fucking game of the year edition, but. Um, so that's cool. If you like this game and you want more, well, you're going to be getting it. So look forward to that. Um, and the final story, this one specifically pertaining to me. Most people probably listening to this don't care about this. I know Montreal doesn't give a shit. Warcraft 3 Reforged has I been I do given, give a shit. I was going to say some, some quick shit date. about this. January 28th, 2020 is when this game is going to come out. I'm just going to say I nailed it. I, I told you. Wait, it you called out. it? You called yeah, it I said it was coming out in the next month or two. I said it, that like two It's just weird that they didn't mention anything about it at BlitzCon. I know. They fucking hate this game. It's clear <laughs> to me. They do. Because they're pooping this out in the middle of January, which is not a typical release window for a Blizzard game. They also, I, as I mentioned before, at, do they want BlizzCon, this game to fail? Why do they want their games to fucking fail? I don't know. But they, they, they are not redesigning the story. They're not redoing any of the audio in the game, which is something they said they were going to do initially when they first announced this. They re- they backpedaled on that, and now we're just getting basically a, an updated, graphically updated version of Warcraft 3 with new missions. I do and, remember that, but I heard they got a lot of backlash for that. People said they didn't want to do that. Yeah, and you, want, you fuckers ruined everything, okay? <laughs> Because, as I said after the BlizzCon episode, and I'm going to repeat myself because this is the dumbest backlash I've fucking ever seen. Blizzard literally said when they announced this that they aren't going to take away the original version of Warcraft 3. It's going to be in this game. You can literally switch to it and play that version of the game at any time. Any fucking time. So, them making a new version of the game with new voiceovers, added story scenes... That wouldn't have impacted the original version of Warcraft 3 in any way. You're all a bunch of idiots. You literally just took value out of this game because you're so mad about fucking Blizzard. Ah, Blizzard's gonna ruin it. They're gonna World of Warcraft it up. Maybe it sucked. Maybe it was gonna suck. Maybe it was. But fuck it. Let them try, you know? Let them fucking try. It's just so goddamn frustrating. I hate the internet sometimes. They're so knee-jerky and angry about fucking everything, okay? Like you right now. Yes! <laughs> I'm really mad. I'm really mad about it because they literally are taking value out of this game. Like, we, the value has been taken away from this experience. Yeah, the only yeah. thing we're getting now is a graphically updated game that has redesigned story missions. That is it. That's the only difference. Those are the only changes we're getting, and that is that is I don't know if that's worth thirty dollars. I mean, I think it is, but it's it's just it's just frustrating that we got robbed of something we potentially could have had, you know. But the thing is, if they had kept with that philosophy, I mean, they seem to be struggling getting this game out. So it honestly may have even pushed this game further back than uh, it is coming now. So I guess I don't know. I guess it's a good thing, but I mean, I don't. I just stop being so angry about everything, internet, please. I know, Justin. Stop being angry. Shut up. Fuck it. I, maybe I, I, I'll probably be as angry as you, but I'm. I'm you know what? I'm going to be on the other side of the fence. This well, time. you've I never kinda, played this game, so. No, I'm, I'm saying, though, like, if they had to did StarCraft 1 like this, yeah. Yeah. like, fully remade it, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have want them to change the audio files or, like, because I, I think the story in StarCraft 1 is, like, perfect. Yeah. And But see, the thing is, WarCraft 3 story is not perfect. Ah, okay. I it see has what you're saying. very serious gaps in it, and I'm going to talk about this when I play this game again. Because yeah, it has some gaps, and, and there's some parts of it that aren't fleshed out enough, and certain characters that just don't get enough screen time. And ah, uh, okay, I see. Those what are you're some saying. of the things that they talked about that they were going to fix, or not not to say fix, but add. You know, like like Sylvanas is a great example. Jane is a great example. Those characters do not get a lot of screen time, and they're really important. So and it's they're like, major characters in like in, in, in Warcraft, Warcraft War. Yes, they're huge characters in Warcraft lore. So it's like I don't know. I, I, I just I, don't know. I think it's just a missed opportunity, and I'm frustrated by it. But you know what? Maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe there's there are some change things in here. You know, it's possible. So we'll see. But January twentieth, twenty twenty, I will be playing it. I don't know if I'm going to get it right away. I mean, dude, I really need to think about my plan of attack for next year because, dude, January is like jam packed now. The end of January. There's, oh, like, a ton of shit coming out. Don't, it's crazy. Don't get gamer fatigue, man. 
Honestly, just, man, don't do it. I'm in it right now. I need to get out of it by the end of January. So, all right, moving on. Uh, game releases. Uh, I mean, honestly, we're like a week before Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's really a lot of indie stuff. Out. It looks like a lot of little uh, stuff. So. Uh, Untitled Goose Game on PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, we already announced that, though. <laughs> I want that. Yeah. yeah. I know. I uh, Gun Vault, if you guys are fans of. Gun Vault, the Gun Vault franchise. Yeah, Gun Vault. They, uh, they come it's on out Xbox One. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's a good side scrolling shooter game. I, I like it. Yep. Uh, that's pretty much all I played on this list, though. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. We're going to call it there, guys. This was a meaty show. Like I said, two and a half hours. You haven't gotten a show this long in months, and you probably won't get a show this long in months. So <laughs> enjoy yeah, it. I think the last time we did this was at the beginning of the show. No, I mean we did this for months. At the beginning of the show, we just didn't we didn't know how to be concise back in the day, but we've learned. Well, actually, I will say we are doing game of the year. Uh, yeah, so the next few weeks, shows are gonna be a little weird because news is gonna be whatever. So we'll talk about whatever news happens if there's anything big. But uh, next week, I think we're uh, next week's kind of our anniversary week for the show. Uh, this will it will be mark one year of us doing the show. So we're probably gonna talk about the show, the future of the show. Uh, what our vision for the show and how this year's gone, I guess, um, potentially during that next week, um, uh, as well as some news and whatever whatever else we're playing, the normal rigmarole of the show. The week after that, so the next two weeks after that, so this this would be the first week of January and yeah. then uh, the second week of January. Those two shows, I don't know what order they're going to be in yet. We need to talk this through, but it's going to be Game of the Year for 2019 and then um, games potentially Games of the Decade for the last decade, yeah, 2010 yeah. through 2019. And I definitely then, want to do games of the decade. And then we also need to do a show previewing 2020 as well. So that actually might be the next three shows after that. So um, that could actually be next week. I don't know. We'll we'll figure this out. But those are the, the shows you should be looking forward to over the next few weeks. Um, if there is any news, we will, of course, talk about it. But um, Yeah, those. and while we're doing that, you guys can think of your games of the year or yep. – in games of the decade. Yeah. Send it to us. Been some interesting uh tidbits I saw on Twitter, so I'm yeah. I'm curious to hear about some other people's stuff. This was a pretty good year overall, I'd say. But um yeah, so if you had any game of the year thoughts or any games you're excited for for next year, you know, send them to the show normally. So, you know, I guess I'll go through the rigmarole here. So if you like this episode, please like the episode, subscribe to the show, and review the show on whatever feed you're listening to it on. And if you could, please share it with your friends. We would like to grow the audience and interact with people some more. Um, if you'd like to interact with either one of us on Twitter, you can do so at itrap for the hog hog. For Montreal, that is the number four, not the word. I am at thundernut zero one. The show is at the players take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter, or you can send us an email to the players take zero one at gmail dot com. As I said, look forward to those shows the next few weeks, and uh. I'm going to wish everybody a Merry Christmas now because by the next time you hear us, it will be after Christmas. So have a good Christmas. Enjoy time with your family. And that's going to be it. So we hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and we will see you on the next one. All right? Bye, guys. Bye.